Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Contineros podcast. The podcast is sponsored by Port Pro, the leading operating system for drayage carriers. Schedule a demo today at portpro.io. And don't forget to mention Contineros for 10% off. Episode 35. We got Jesus de la Torre in the studio. How you doing? Pretty good, man. How's it going? I'm great. Thanks for asking. First of all, thanks for coming down on a Sunday. Oh, no Your problem. Day off, you know. And no I appreciate you coming, coming and opening the doors to the legendary booth, <laughs> and having a good conversation about the, the port life. Yeah. Um, let's get into it. Uh, tell us a little bit more about you. Uh, I'm the oldest of four, born and raised in the San Fernando Valley. Uh, spent working since I was 16. First job was a dishwasher that I would do uh, after high school because uh, my mom, well, I was born and raised by my mom and my grandma. So okay. they didn't have the financial to get the gown and the whole prom stuff. So uh, what <laughs> what I... <laughs> What uh what I ended up happening was getting a, a part time job. Yeah. Washing dishes, packing ice bags. Uh it wasn't fun, but hey, some money was some money to get that taken care of. Um after that I went to made it to college, made it to yeah. orientation. Oh, didn't you made go it? back after yeah. orientation. <laughs> was uh, it for you? Yeah. It just it was I mean, just trying to follow everybody. Oh, everybody's going to college. Let me go to college. How old are you now, by the way? 25. Just oh, okay, 25 okay, okay. about okay. two weeks ago. Um, yeah, I made a past orientation and didn't go back. Went to a, a local staffing agency, worked a regular warehouse job and uh, did that for a couple of years. Got my first car and then I was like, you know what? I, 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 I was seeing it where I'd rather get in debt with a car than, you know, student loans. Oh, okay. So... Did that, worked that, and then just basically bounced, bounced around from job to job, different warehouse jobs, packaging, uh, lumber yard, box truck, flatbed, hauling, did all that. All of those were the same pay, minimum wage? or wo- Basically, yeah. yeah, minimum wage and just do over hours. But back then, I would do overtime, not knowing Uncle Sam would be like, hey, I need, I need my cut of that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just worked, 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 and then uh, eventually moved out to Alabama. Oh, yeah? Uh, back in 2016. Sweet. Oh, you like that song? At first. Uh, at first. <laughs> I was hearing it, uh, and I would feel like, yeah, I'm from Alabama now, yeah. blah, blah, blah. At but first, huh? After, what happened? I say after, what, after two, three months of hearing it constantly on the radio, oh, okay. and it's just like, all right, I'm tired of it. Um, uh, went over there, was working at a lumber yard. You know how they trim windows, lumber, you name it, for for houses that were being constructed. Um, Till I noticed uh, the guys that had a CDL, they had a Class B, but they were they had a CDL, and they would leave early, like around lunchtime, twelve. And I tell them, hey man, that's it. There's still more work to do. Like, oh no, I'm good, man. Just, this is all the loads for the day. Boom, and they were making more than me. Mm. Till one of my buddies there, uh, CJ, he's still out there hauling. Um, he's like, man, you need to get your CDL, get out of this warehouse. I'm like, ah, I'll think about it. Think. I never saw myself driving trucks, ever. <laughs> it never crossed my mind. I'd see them drive by, and I'm like, I never want to be a driver. I never want to drive trucks. I want to do something productive. Growing up, that's what I, that's what I thought. Um, then I, it clicked after a couple weeks. Like, damn, these guys are making more money, and they're not working as hard. They're working half days and going home early and they're making more than me and i'm over here busting my ass extra hours i need to look into it so it caught my attention when i was like 20 years old and a half and mm-hmm. then i did my research had to wait till i was 21 um that company it's crazy um i yeah. told the, the 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 manager i said hey man uh, i want to go to school get my cdl come back and work for you guys in alabama in alabama okay he's like yeah yeah we'll pay for it you know we'll do whatever you need let us know will take care of you while you go to school for the three weeks. So the Friday before that Monday that I turned 21, I told him, say, hey, you know, I, I'm going to start Monday. How's it looking? Are you able to help me? Oh, no, you know, the boss said I can't pay for it. it. It's not beneficial for us and blah, blah, blah. I said, oh, okay. Well, I quit. Oh, well, you can't quit. You can be two-week notice. I said, no, I quit. So luckily I had 
money saved up to cover the school, which was 3500 And I just quit my job, quit it, went to school for three weeks. Uh, unfortunately, the school was two and a half hours away from my mom's house over there. So I'd get up at 4.30 in the morning to leave the house at 5 to make it to school by 8. And then be all day in there, get out of school at 5, come back home, two-hour mm -hmm. drive, and still eat, shower, and watch YouTube videos. What year was this that it was $3,500 for a school? This was when I was 21, so I'd say 2018, 2019 or so. Um, it was a little independent school, um, but yeah, I mean, did that for two weeks. YouTube helped a lot with my pre-trip and naming the whole engine parts and all that. Yeah, that pre-trip is what gets a lot of people for some reason. You overthink it probably. Yeah, uh, you know, that's exactly what it is because yeah. it's like you don't. It's so literal that you want to make it sound so fancy yeah. that you fuck up. You want to go by the book and not mess up. And luckily, the, the instructor I had, he was cool. I mean, I made it through the kingpin, the fifth wheel. And then he's like, hey, uh, you're missing something here. But mm. he tried to play it off. So I was like, all right, cool. So I'll just sit there and think, think, think. And then got it done. Um, yeah, that was that was a crazy experience. Long, long nights studying for a license. That yeah to this day i mean it's it's been the best decision of my life yeah and going into it young too <laughs> not knowing i mean i they told me over the road i looked into it like nah, i don't want to be away three weeks at a time come back yeah. for two three days i need to be at home with my mom help my grandma out that's always been me being the oldest helping mm -hmm. them out so um i didn't do that got into ready mix over there concrete um that was that was tough Cause it was a, you never, you always had a different start time and there was never a, a, a secured end time. Mm -hmm. And it was seven days a week where Monday to Saturday work, Saturday you get off at 4 p.m. And hey, Sunday come in at 10 at night. We got a 1 a.m. pour. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I did that before the ports came back down here, transferred my license over, had to take the test, the rent test all over again. Yeah, Which why'd, you come, like. why'd you come down here? Uh, my grandma was over here, um, and she kind of was like, she's getting to the age where she can't work full time no more. So I wasn't going to stay over there and kind of have her go into, what do they call them, uh, retirement homes or yeah, yeah. they get those aids or whatever. So yeah. I was like, you know what? I have my CDL. Worst thing that's happened is I go over there, take the test, and get it again so that's what ended up happening i just shot back down here uh paid all my stuff the fees take the test over got so my you, license you can't just transfer it you have to test all over i, even, I thought you could even though it's a cdl yeah i thought you could but um i think what happened with me is because uh being under 25 oh, okay you automatically fall into the what is it non-interstate where you can't really oh, drive yeah. intra intra yeah okay so oh okay okay i think that's what it was so take all the written tests which wasn't too bad just a couple of days of restudying them all over again like it was back in school but i was scared that i had to take that uh pre-trip again at, at the time did they have the paper one still because back then when i in 2006 when i got mine they would have the long list of the test it's no, a paper that's was, like this long a long yeah. as rectangle and, and they, they had like uh test uh i don't know if it was letters or numbers but test one, two, three, four, and five. The questions? They were all mixed up. Sometimes you'll get, you know, you'll get tested with one. Then you'll get tested. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I think, so, uh, no, it wasn't because even when I got my regular driver's license in 20, was it 15, 14? Yeah. It was in the computer. Already? Tablet. It was okay. already. So, okay. um, yeah, all that was tablet, um, which was cool, which is nice because the, the DMV guide or genie, I forget the app I use, is the exact word for word question yeah choices as a dmv so yeah my cousin got his permit with the with an app well studying on an app it had the real questions and it's called she's cd <laughs> it's called the cdl prep app. yeah so they're just doing it over and over and that's exactly how i did it in school is that app and then when the, when the phone battery would go down i'd go on youtube and just sit there i mean i was already at school all day so that was my mm. my benefit but um, just me knowing that, hey, I quit my job. I have no income. I, I need to get this. Yeah, so I yeah. was just 
that was basically my drive is after two hours drive coming back home of all day in school still hate youtube being up to like 12 couple hours and mm. shoot back um it wasn't easy but i mean it's it's just the the drive you get where it's like hey you know it's gonna be better for you yeah than what you've been doing i don't want to go back to a warehouse or dishwashing or any of that so but how did you end up at the ports uh crazy it, story right man. away you got into it no no you, no well when i came back i was doing ready mix yeah uh, yeah in locally in, in the valley yeah um and then uh it's crazy how life works um i joined a car club called violent riders mm -hmm. um and then through time with that the president of it um cali he works at that yard you guys went to with port pro oh, okay next gen. yeah so he kind of was like hey we're looking for some drivers i'm like hey bro i got my my class a if you need me to we can so he explained to me what it was with the containers 45 footers 40 footers 20 footers yes at first, I was I was hesitant. So I was like, "Man, that's I don't have any experience with that." And he did tell me, "We'll train you. We'll train you guys before we turn you loose." Um, but it was maybe a couple, like couple couple weeks, couple two months, where it was like I was indecisive, till um, that ready mix company decided to uh, put me on. They were paying me by the load, cash, and then they decided to um, go corporate. They gave us a heads up. Hey, we're gonna go corporate, go hourly, but we never agreed on a on a hourly wage. You know, I, oh, there was yeah. never a discussion like, "Hey, these are the benefits we're giving you. This is the four hundred one k plan. This is what we're offering, or let's come to terms." Um, it just came to a point where, from one week to another, they held my check, and, well, my pay, and they said, "Hey, we're going you hourly." So I'm like, "Well, I I can't do that. We haven't discussed the wage. Um, the wage you're throwing me. I've been here for two years." Um, they gave me a brand new truck, kept up, kept up with it. Um, I told them I've been here two years and you want to offer me this wage. Where, it was less? Uh, less. Well, it was, it was a starting wage they started. Um, but what I didn't agree with was how is somebody who hasn't been here for two years like me going to be getting similar pay to me? So what is all these two years that I've worked and done? Where, yeah. where, where does that go? Just what it goes back the door so um it, it was never a, it was never a bad uh what do you say it was never a confrontational thing i went talk to the boss just you know man to man like hey this is what you're offering i can't can't live off of this i can't do this so if, if we can't come to terms and it's cool let me go figure something out um and then this this will be my my last day so uh when they were mentioning you don't do the, two week notice it's all, <laughs> like, nah, on the spot hey fuck this man. i mean not really but fuck this but it's like it, no it depends it, these it scenarios sounds like they just did you dirty so it's like it, you know there's there's the first one didn't keep his word the first one didn't keep his word the second one i mean we never agreed to terms yeah surprise. i understand the company was moving mm -hmm. to a corporate and I, I like i told him i said i understand it but how can you throw me on a wage where I haven't agreed or signed paperwork there's no health benefits yet there's none of that so how am I taking a drastic pay cut and the company's taking the next step forward how is what is that telling me with and the thing that that really got to me was how is somebody that hasn't put time in gonna get same pay as me what does yeah. that mean what is these last two years that I worked um and did some uh you know so you got to do stuff to deliver the concrete or you know keep stuff behind the books to mm. just let it flow but it is what it is um it wasn't it's not a bad company to work for it's just the wage they threw out to me I, I personally couldn't live off of it i told them we like i said we discussed talked and did it come to terms and you know i said well you know wish you guys the best of luck and they, they did tell me um and if it never works out feel free to come back because like i said it's i i it was it was a mutual thing we talked about it but when they first brought up the wage like hey we're gonna start you guys up at 25 that's when i told the my the president of the club like hey bro i'm gonna go shoot to the ports uh when can i start and then yeah did that the friday we talked with the ready mix guys left that monday i started training over here and been there ever since going on a year a year and three months now started january of last year what do you was, yeah go ahead it was it was tough it wasn't tough it was it was crazy hauling those 40 yeah. footers 
what, how do you consider what do you consider training when they say they'll train you like what, what did that consist of for a new port driver like you uh well training obviously wasn't driving the truck the mm-hmm. gear shifts all that the new the thing for me training was locking the pins uh securing the 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 trailer that it hooks onto the what do you call it the King the pin. locking jaw okay make sure the handle's good uh the landing gear uh checking the tires the lights the glad hands um outside of that how the company works where hey this is how the manifest works yeah uh backing up uh when i was training they were they were, they were having me do uh warehouse deliveries and at first i was excited like oh yeah warehouse is cool till i came across some of those doors like hey how, how the hell do i get in here it's, it's tight i'm gonna i'm gonna hit the truck or hit the fence i'm not wanting to even do that if if um something's gonna hit the truck or close to it i i did that the ready makes where it was streets where it was trees i'm like hey bro there's there's trees limbs hitting down it's gonna mess up the truck the customers would think i was complaining but i was like bro i'm looking out for the truck i mean this truck goes down or breaks down i'm out of i'm out of work so there goes to that um yeah. did the warehouses didn't like that uh i don't like the live unload or live load i don't like sitting there so uh told talk to the boss said, hey i want to do straight ports oh are you ready for the ports i'm like well let's go i mean i don't want to do warehouses uh so the training of the ports was sending me with another guy that drives right there and just follow him i remember my first day was follow him or or co-pilot uh follow him okay bobtail to Maersk back when there was chassis yeah yeah um and that was that was scary because I mean, it was like, damn, what am I doing here? Where do I go? When you followed him, were you already assigned to a load, or you were following him just yeah, to, I was, just to I was know already, where that No, I was already dispatched. Oh, okay. So, um, and he was by the hour as well? No, we're, we're by the load. He was by the load, and I was by the load. That's nice of him, right? Like, Because if it's by the load, we've got to wait around that, for that, you. That guy, shout out to that guy. We called him Cholo. Mm. Um, man, the first... Cholo? First, What's up, Cholo? First, uh, first couple of weeks, I was doing night shift. I would call him. Almost every load, hey, bro, I'm going to this spot where I go, you know, throughout the night. I'd call them every day, every night, multiple mm-hmm. times, like, hey, bro, I'm lost. Where do I go? And he'd be like, hey, go here, go here, boom, 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 boom. Did he or work he, night shift too or you were waking him up? Uh, no, he worked day and night. Oh, okay. Kind of like what, I'm, what I've been yeah, doing yeah. lately. Um, Hustlers. It's, it's, it's not easy. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, he was, uh, he was cool, man. Uh, he still works there and... He's like, hey, you still need help? I'm like, nah, man, I don't. Like, he, he did some, mm-hmm. some you know, experienced guy thing at Maersk. I'm not going to say what he did, but yeah. I got lost following him in there. And I'm like, hey, bro, where'd you go? So I called him later. I go, hey, you're supposed to keep up. I'm like, man, I'm making my stop signs. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm from my first day at the ports. So I don't want to mess anything up. I know there's there's stuff people do and, and everybody. Yeah, you don't want that lady up. chasing you down and screaming at you and nah, banning you, bro. Nah, especially <laughs> not now with how stuff's been going on at the porch with the unfortunate accidents like, yeah yeah it's it's crazy but yeah man that that guy like i said cholo he's he, he helped me out a lot getting getting my feet in the in the water at the ports and then uh yeah i've been at it ever since still every now and then at pct i'll i'll uh go to the wrong spots but other than that even i would go to the wrong spots bro with the empty side I would always, for some reason, forget the order of which the the numbers go. Yeah, because on the left side they have like the one thousands and higher. Or they have like, like the the thirty three hundreds, forty four, and yeah. And then it's I, A, I, so you think I'll it's be right way there opposite. The right. Yeah, I'm like fuck. I've done that a couple of times recently. The forklift guy was like, "Hey, you're on the other side of the railroads." I'm like, "Damn." So there or I you go. take the shortcut through the high line. Yeah. But then the line is all the way on the other side, so. I've cut where it says you got to go right yeah. at that T. I make mm-hmm. a left. And yeah. one time I got caught, and he's like, you got to go to the back of the line. I'm like, damn. I mean, it's it's part of it. There's someone out there hitting their screen right now. Yeah, like, People look like at these you. guys. The guys mess everything up. We've all done a little something. What's yeah. your favorite thing about it so far? The whole, the port? Yeah, you're trucking the port. Well, I mean. Your, your, your career at this point, how do you feel about it? It. I, the, it's the best thing I've made, man. I mean, I've I've I'm, I've put it on my story where it's like it's just times where I'm sitting in line and it's like, yeah, I'm sitting in line. It gets frustrating, but just sitting back to what the past experiences I've had with the other jobs, it's like, 
I can't complain waiting in line. It sucks. It sucks waiting in those in those lines for an hour, two hours, just to burn an empty or to even do a duel. But I mean, me personally, the porch is the best thing there is, except for the flaws. But yeah, the, the, we'll get into those. The, the the general aspect, it's it's easy. It's it's not easy. Whereas anybody can do it, but it's it's the easiest job in the world. You get your appointment, your load. It's just up to you to make that appointment or find a plan where hey, you got to get up a little earlier, make line, get in at six seven a.m., be in and out before the traffic jam or whatever. Um, yeah. Locking your pins. That's yeah, the lock hardest those part. pins. Lock those pins. And uh, those curves, huh? Oh, man. it's I slow down. Yeah. I slow down. Even when I'm bobtail. Well, bobtail, I, I'll, I'll speed up a little bit. But even when it's windy, man, it'll, it'll get, it'll get, it gets windy down here. And uh, I'll I'll kind of have a hesitation where it's like, do I really want to be hauling this container? Yeah. Uh, when I first started in the rain, I wouldn't really drive the ports in the rain man as soon as it rains people <laughs> don't know how to drive it's bad enough they don't know yeah. how to drive in the daytime and when yeah. rain hits it's like a yeah i always call it a, like you see at least three four accidents yeah you know? like, and it's always right there on the 110 or the 710 yeah you can never escape them but yeah that that trainer guy um he would always give me give me a hard time because when it would rain i'd be like hey bro i think i'm only do one load and and i'm out <laughs> he'd be like man it's only rain what's going on i'm like hey bro you know, the way these guys drive, you know, yeah. the way it works, where if we hit somebody, we're automatically at fault. I mean, nah, nah. You have to protect your record, you too. Protect the, yeah, because it's different for us. Our licenses are bread and butter. But, you got any uh, port stories? Man, Should we I, go in categories or just whatever you want to come up with? We can go in categories because I'm sure I have some stories. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to put, um, well, let's save a, a violent one for last. Oh, a violent one. Mm. And then uh, a, f- a funny one. <laughs> funny or dumb? Uh, we've all had those. <clears throat> see. I got a violent one. I mean. Well, let's start with that one then. Let's start with that one. Uh, I was at, uh, what was I at? I was at uh, Maersk. And you know how when it gets traffic jam. People are cutting. Traffic jam in there? It's like, going into the pedestals like at the beginning. Once oh, you pass yeah. The, the oh, yeah. X-ray screen. So that trainer guy told me, hey, when you get here and it's packed, don't sit back and relax in your truck because people are cutting. You got to stay on it. I was like, man, whatever. So first time I experienced the traffic, yeah, I was sit back, get out of my truck, walk around. And people were cutting me. I was like, damn, I miss, I'm, I'm, I'm digging myself in a hole. I got to start being on it. So... Uh, a couple of days later, I'm going in there, and there's this this viejito guy. This this old, I want to say, just Hispanic. I didn't really know what he was. Um, he was doing something in his truck, and I cut him. He got out the truck and like, don don don. Hey, just estoy en línea, blah 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 blah. Estabas. Estabas. I told him, <laughs> don estaba aquí. Si no se pone las pilas, no se pone trucha. You, you, you lose your spot. No no no, tú no me puedes quitar a mí mi lugar, blah blah. Yo estaba aquí primero, blah blah. Like, so I opened the door and I was like, well, I, I told him, I said, because well, I was already two trucks before the speaker. Mm-hmm. So that's right before where those barricades are at. So I'm like, I'm, yeah. I'm not moving. Um, he kind of got, was blowing his horn. I'm like, well, he, what's, gonna, what's blowing the horn going to get to you? Yeah. I'm not moving. I'm not going to get out of here. The barricades are in front of me. So what, what are you going to yeah. get? Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, some people... I mean, I know it's not right because when I get cut, when they cut me, it's like, bro, what the, you know. But well, that's that's things it, in motion. It's, it's like you know, you know, it is what it is. Sometimes it's 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 a it's a it's a give and the get. Yeah, maybe you did that because you learned that from when they did it to you, and then it carries over. Yeah, well, I mean, it you can kind of see that's what you have to do because like you see people, I don't know how it happens, but they're they're in an angle where they're trying to get into one lane specifically. And then there's like that gap in between. Yeah. Some people are. Oh, oh they yeah. Don't wanna, they don't want to hit nothing. I'm like, fuck it, bro. I'm, I'm going in there. And mm-hmm. if it, I'd rather hit the container. Than hit the, if I can clear the truck, the cab, I'm good. I, I would hate when that container. would happen because the guy in front of me would switch lanes. Yeah. And that lane and would suddenly stop. Lanes. That lane would stop halfway. I'm like, motherfucker. Now all these guys on the right 
are going are in going. front. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it'll happen where you cut and you think you're slick, and then you're laying. That guy is having trouble with the mm-hmm. speaker or whatever, and it's like. Fuck. And then you see the guy in front of you all crooked. I'm like, hmm, nah, you, see what's you what's weren't there, on. were you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got that face in the mirror, like. Up. Oh. Yeah. yeah, that happens. Happens a lot. That wasn't too violent, thank God. It could have been. No, well, I, like I said, they they told me is is if you get violent at the ports, the trainer, that guy Cholo, he's like, you can't, you can't get kicked out of here. You can't get kicked out of here. You can't come in. And if that day that's we only have loads from that port, you're not making money. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, so, I mean, the worst, the most thing I'll do is probably get out the truck, yell at somebody, or roll down the window <laughs> and like, hey, bro, what the fuck? Um, but. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's just I don't want to get kicked out of no ports, man. It just it'll it it be crazy. Yeah, a lot of thugs with twigs out here, like <sighs> man. But outside, it's not really like that all the time. Not the same energy, you know. Nah, it's just I think it's 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 what builds up to being in that moment in time in the ports. Some people right. are waiting in hours, and it's just like damn, any little yeah. thing it just you're already on the edge. Already on the edge, and I, I felt that way too. Where it's like I'm waiting in line, and it's uh, and you're by the load, right? And I'm by the load, oh, okay. so it's like, you know, I'm sitting there, and the crane guy will go on lunch, and he's one truck in front of me, my container's right there, and I just, I'm like, man, what the fuck? Like, my container's <laughs> right there. You could have spent five more minutes, um, or you burn the empty, and everything's going good. Yeah. You didn't make line going in. You go burn the empty, go to the second pedestals. Everything's cool till you get to your load out zone, and it's packed. And it's like, fuck. Yeah. There are some things that don't make sense, and the frustrators. Oh, one that I would things. dislike was when my container is the only one in the spot and the machine still has to wait for a clerk. That part didn't make sense to me. Or when you're the only one in the zone, um, this happened to me a couple times, especially on Saturdays, where you're the only one in the zone, your container's right there, and the crane guy is too busy having a build-off battle with the other crane guy on the zone next door, and they're just moving containers, restacking and stacking. I'm like, mm-hmm. bro, my container's at the top, or I'm the only one here. Come get my container. I'll be yeah. out of my way. You they call it doing pushing back. Doing. doing pushbacks. But, I mean, I guess it's part of it. Yeah, it's the shit. The, the ship has priority. We we, we go last, bro. Oh, man, it's, it's just the timing, though. Like, do that in the graveyard shift or something. Exactly. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we have an appointment. Can we get out of here? That's another thing. What's the point of the appointments? Yeah. If if it it really it's if I find it pointless, if we have an appointment. We get there an hour early, like they give us that that window yeah, hour, yeah. forty five minutes early, and we get to our spot to burn the empty. They were they send us to a zone where they're yeah. doing a ship. So then, how does that make? There's sense? no benefit to being on time or being early. I think the appointment is just to document when you miss them, and then because so it's it's happened to me at, at trade pack where I get there and I'm I'm at the speaker and I was in line and I'm at the last eight ten minutes before. I missed my appointment. So I tell I was hauling two different uh, 20-footers as a 40-footer on a 40-foot uh, chassis. Okay. I told the lady, I said, I have two separate 20 empties I'm burning, but I'm taking out a 40-foot f- loaded container. That sounds like a complicated transaction. Man, this lady here, she made me miss my appointment. And all that time she wasted trying to figure it out or what? Trying to figure it out, she gives me my two empty tickets, and I don't have my, I don't, I never get the loadout ticket. So I sit there and push the button again, and of course, you know, you gotta wait till you get called. It's like, oh, what can I help you with, driver? I'm like, well, the lady before had trouble and didn't give me my loadout ticket. I have my two separate twenty foot empty tickets, but never got my forty foot loadout ticket. Mm-hmm. I need that. And then I give him the info. He said, oh, well, you missed your appointment. You have to turn around, and call your dispatcher. And I told the lady, I said, look, man, respectfully, this is bullshit. I told him, I said, you guys are fucking up because I've been here waiting in line. It's jam-packed. I tell the lady specifically, you guys can do your job right. I'm speaking fluent English. You guys make me miss my appointment. So now what do I got to do? I eat the the, the bargain of the the stick because you guys can't listen or can't understand my fluent English. On that dinosaur equipment. On a dinosaur, all that's equipment that I can barely hear you speaking out. And then you want to give me attitude because I'm not responding? Yeah, no. But did you speak into the mic when you were talking? Yeah, right? I do that. <laughs> I do that. <laughs> Got it. You like how I pulled oh, that one up? Oh, man, huh? I was sleep. I was sleep. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's that too, man. The equipment Damn. they have, it's... But but so to get that appointment, was it part of a dual transaction? Yeah. Yeah, that was that was my dual setup was the two separate 20s. 
and at, then that forty. So but how I, come that went through, but the forty didn't go through? The fact that the, that the twenties went through would have mean she could have done something. The lady said that she had to. She said, "Give me a minute because you have two separate twenty foot containers. I need to write them down." I said, "You have cameras looking at them. It's right there." She had me get out and read her the container that was behind the cab because she couldn't read the letters. Mm. So, I mean, when I missed my appointment, I just I was I was I was. I'm I'm curious about those. I've always wanted to ask: Do, do they pay double for moving two empties, or is it one and a half? Or you know what? I think I I think they paid me double nice. for the two separate empties. I want to say they did. Yeah, it's nice. I want to say they did. It's only right. Remember. Yeah, <laughs> right. I, it is. Um, but like I said, the the luckily the dispatcher I have, he's 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 cool, man. He, yeah. I I text him like, hey, bro, I missed my appointment. He he tells me, give me a minute, let me change it up. So I'm waiting at the trouble window. And How five, your, ten minutes, and boom. Oh, he appointment. saved the day. Okay, cool. He does that a lot, man. Yeah. That, that guy, is, he's, he's awesome. Shout out to Andy, my dispatcher. Uh, that guy, he's, he works his magic. He's a one-man band. He's yeah. there alone at night, and he'll, there's an appointment missing or something. I just shoot him a text or call him. He's like, hey, give me five minutes, ten minutes. I don't know what he does. Boom, 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 boom. Here's your new appointment. Exit, come back in, or give it some time. And I've had where dispatchers say, oh, well, bring it back to the yard. Here, come get another one. Because they don't want to do that little bit of extra work. Mm-hmm. Or they'll tell me, take it to another port, do another transaction. It's like, I'm already here. Try yeah. to find something, yeah. you know. Yeah. Instead of me Try. going out to make lines somewhere else. So that this track on, on Instagram for the dispatchers, that, that don't apply to him. Nah, that don't <laughs> apply to him. I shared it on my story, and I'm <laughs> sure he saw it. But, I mean, he... Uh, he hasn't told me anything, but if he does, I'm a... <laughs> hey, that shit was low-key uh, catchy. I still remember, I hate my dispatcher with a passion, oh, yeah. And then this part, you stupid little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw it, and it, 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 it resembled to a couple of dispatchers I had before, but, I mean, the uh, one I got right now, Andy, he's, <laughs> he's solid, man. He's cool. Um, I don't know who he was doing, rapping out of the inside of, a, of an engine. Uh, on top or of the engine on the truck no yeah yeah i've had my fair share with some uh dispatchers that don't want to do more than what they get paid for i'll leave it at that that's not my job bro no yeah. or oh they, they they won't tell you that oh i don't get paid to do that but though they're, they're making you understand that they, with their actions i mean with their actions yeah, yeah. so hey, to the port stories though uh, you got a funny one or something dumb you did when you started Maybe with those two twenties, dropped one of them at the curb or something. Nah, nah <laughs> not yet, man. Like, knock, on, knock on wood. I don't need that happening ever. Um, I had a funny one where it was at Yang Ming again, um, and I went to my loadout spot, and it was, I want to say where the seven hundreds are, that back back right side, mm-hmm. and I didn't know that the loadout zone wraps around that backside in between the zones where there's like a single file line. So I go and as I see, as I've always been told, if your spot's open, boom, park in there. Uh, so that's what I did. So my spot parked in there. The guy that was behind me comes out and says, Hey, you're cutting a line. And so, um, well, my spot's open. So no, I'm not <laughs> like, what is it? He started getting like, little angry like hey nah nah that's fucked up you can't be doing that blah 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 Nos estamos, tenemos rato aquí esperando, blah 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 why didn't they go for it then i guess they i guess nobody was in my zone so he started getting a little um uh, little like a little aggressive or just like pumping his chest <laughs> and screaming so i'm like all right bro like i'm not, you're not gonna talk to me like i'm not somebody like I'm outside you're, this truck. You're getting the bottle. I was ready. getting the little gallon ready. Like, all right, let me mix it up. Make sure he gets everything. So uh, he starts just you know running his mouth and saying, "Nah, fucking drivers, blah blah blah." So I open the door, um, and I have my left leg on the that first step. Looking back, and I'm like, "Hey, keep talking to me like that. We don't have a problem. So get back in your truck and shut up." And he said, no, pinche, pinche troquero pendejo, vales verga, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, ah, sí, pendejo. So as I'm getting ready to get out, in between the containers come like three, four other guys that are in line. Come and say, hey, the line's back there, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, damn. 
I had a little hesitation, like, okay, if I go crazy, <laughs> getting real. There's, there's, there's four other guys. I mean, what, what am I going to do? Yeah. But at one that point, one. you didn't know about the other but guys. But at that point, I didn't know about the other guys. Oh, they were coming yeah, in yeah, between yeah. the containers yeah. um, till they came out. And they're like, hey, the line's back here, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, my spot's open, so mm-hmm. it is what it is. They're like, no, pero nosotros vamos al de allá enfrente de usted, pero acá está la fila. Le digo, ire don. I told him, I said, ire don. No sé ustedes cómo trabajan, pero a mí me dijeron, si el lugar está abierto, métete. Porque está cabrón. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Shut my truck, put the windows up, and just laid in the cab. I can hear them talking outside. They were all behind the truck and talking about it. Oh, blah, yeah, blah. yeah. I was like, damn, these guys better not do something to my lights or something. Because it was cut nighttime. The air, cut, cut the, the airline line or something. Yeah. But I was like, nah, I don't think so. So I, that was a funny one because I was kind of getting already. Muy chingón. Muy and chingón. Then. <laughs> and then I see the other four guys come out. I'm like, all right, well, we got four other guys right there plus this guy yeah. five. That's, that's but you learned tough. something, though, about but, the other side. Right? Yeah, and that, that helped me where now, yeah. after that, if I see a fool, I'll wrap around or go drive around and see it. And I'm like, all right, I got to yeah. get in line. But ah, even but then, that, if. But that sucks, though, too, because, you know. I, I mean, I play it off. I, I, I shouldn't say it's on camera, but um, I play it off. I act like I'm going to go yeah. looking at the line. If my spot's open, I'll bust a U-turn yeah. or set him a pendejo and yeah. back in there if I can. I mean. Yeah. I think that was my technique. I would always. I think that's how it should be. You know why I did it that way? Because I used to. If you go straight to the line, you never know. Sometimes people honk because they're mad that they didn't fit. Yeah. like Or like. You have a 20 and you fit and you're going up further down the line and maybe they have a 40 but they don't fit and they still mm. want to go further down the line but you happen to fit where they want it to be no yeah. so they gotta hold back and then i i would i realized that i sometimes i'll wait in line for nothing no yeah. so i always went people honk and then sometimes your instinct is like oh shit i did something wrong let me go line up <laughs> it is yeah <laughs> fuck that I would always just ignore that and go to my spot if it was open. Yeah. The only one that would kick me out is a clerk or something if, if they're running the show a certain way. Because that happens. Like, you have one truck in the whole row and everyone's on the in the back. That happens at, at, at YTI a lot. Yeah, you pull up, they're screaming at you like, I'm like what the fuck? Like, this shit's open. Like, they, what's going they, on? At YTI, they're bad for doing that. They always do that. Spots are open and they want you to make line because they're controlling the traffic flow. Uh, but that doesn't th- help because you got doesn't. the machine going up and down more than, more than it needs to. The security guards, bro, the, 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 the whoever's in charge of running that thing. I, like I said uh, yet again, I mean we don't know who it is. I yeah. don't know. Uh, I hope they're watching this video, but they should really get their shit together because it's pointless to make line if your spot's open. If your spot's open and there's no traffic in the loading zone, why are you causing traffic outside of that? So there's been times at Houston where I I just. I go the wrong way because they want you to, you know. Oh, then they way. play chicken with you, bro. They, I just bust a U-turn, go in, and the little come back and say, hey, did she uh, chalk you off? I'm like, nope, she hasn't. I just played off. But I can see the guys wait, making in line, like, waving their hands, like, hey, what the hell? Yeah. I'm like, hey, bro, I mean, I, I got to get my little too. I mean, it's just, there's ways around it. Um, I used to carry my own chalk, allegedly. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to do that. I mean, I've, you better learn your spot the right way or you're going to get, I've get learned, the wrong load, bro. My, my boy, my boy, Lamar, shout out Lamar and Austin. They, they, they gave me some, some, some pointers, pointers, P's and Q's on, on how to, how to, how to get this game down. So. That's that WAP City training. It's, it's <laughs> certified training right there. <laughs> um, I had stuff for the chassis, how to muff flaps, all that. You name it. They'll get you right. They'll tell you what, what you yeah. need, what supplies and boom. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's. That's a crazy one. What's the dumbest shit you did? Um, damn, this is recent too. Um, I had a 3 p.m. appointment. And I hauled ass from the yard to Maersk. Thinking my appointment was for Maersk. Because um, I saw APO all mm-hmm. packed up. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, man, I hate to be going to APO right now. You know how it goes up to Navy Way, yeah. up down there. So I see it, and I'm just, I, I look at him like, damn, sucks to be in the APL line, you know, talking shit. Like, I'm like, oh, I, it couldn't be me or whatever. I go to uh, MERS, it's empty. I go to the speaker. The lady's like, oh, we're not accepting uh, CMAs and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, what's going on? I go to a trouble window. They're like, oh, well, it's, it's invalid appointment. It's not here. So I text my dispatcher. And then he's like, what do you mean? It's APL's accepting them. So I'm like, APL? <laughs> so I look at the text and it said APL for yeah. 3 p.m. I'm like fuck. So 
Merce with their chassis. That chassis was needed a BIT. So when I exited, I had to wait, get the BIT done, then exit again, then go back to APL and see that line. I'm like, oh, fuck, what do I do? So I made a left. Who do I cut? Who do I cut? <laughs> that, that's that's what I did. I went, made a left and was, you know, cruising and yeah. then saw a little opening and got in there and that was that. Almost missed my appointment. Yeah. But while I was waiting in line, I told the dispatcher again. I let him know, like, hey, bro, I'm not going to miss the appointment. Yeah. Um, I'm waiting in line. So you send an email, and I was I was good. How do you feel about at APL, there's that lane that is like a, people merge into it and avoid the long-ass line, and then they come from the evergreen side, and they merge into the line instead of making line in the back. Do you let them in or not? <sighs> Man. Do, do, you, do you make eye contact or not, bro? Uh, I don't make eye contact I, sometimes i do bro i'm not gonna lie sometimes i make yeah. eye contact and just shake my head like no bro you're not coming in and the guy will be like hey let <laughs> they, me in let me in i'm like yeah. nah bro you're not they go there and then, el, el hood. They get yeah close, they go close. they get close and then i'm like damn bro this this guy he's and you can tell you can tell the trucks they yeah. got scratches they got mirrors missing yeah, he's, or they got, he's like yeah. he, he don't give a fuck so yeah. if it's a truck like that i'm like hey bro go in bro go ahead i know you don't <laughs> give a shit go ahead or if it's a brand new truck or i see it as decent i'm like oh, you're not gonna hit your truck yeah you know but uh, yeah and again i mean it just depends what side of the field you're on you trying to cut hey appreciate it or oh you fucking asshole you didn't let me in or you're on the other side where it's like nah, i'm not letting you in bro go get your ass in line yeah it just it depends what side of the ball te toca ese día. yeah i just feel awkward doing it i i i don't think i i've done it more than once i i don't like that feeling of asking you for permission to let me in you know what i mean and then also on top of that like Knowing I, that it's kind of shady. Yeah. But sometimes I've done stuff like that when I'm tested with time. Like, it's like. Well, you have no choice. Like, hey, yeah, bro, I, need, like, I, fuck, need I, need, I need to do this shit. I've, I've learned that. I mean, it, it's. I can't miss this appointment, bro. Yeah. Can't miss it to sit in line with the empty for two hours after you you get your, your tickets. Um, nah, I've, I've dealt with that where um, I don't say, hey, let me cut. I just. Boom, mm-hmm. go in there where the, the cab's in there, but the container's sticking out and mm-hmm. they have no choice but to let me in. Uh, uh, like I said, it's and, just, and nine out of ten people that, that talk shit to you for cutting do it too. The same it's thing. It like, sucks when, they they happen, even, when it happens to them. It's like to what I say. When I get cut, I'm cutting like, hey, bro, why the fuck you cut me, blah, blah, blah. But then when you got to cut, and it's it's just, you you it's it's part of it. It's part of it. Sometimes you're on the good side, sometimes you're on the. So you're on the shipping side where you're cutting people or you're on the receiving side where you're getting cut and it's just like fuck mm-hmm. what can you what can you do slam the steering wheel and say fuck that's that's what i do when when the cranes miss me or there's a line or everything's going smooth and i see a line to burn the empty or the load that, that that's my thing i just scream out fuck but the windows are up so nobody's yeah me. i know one of the best ways to get skipped falling asleep no, you gotta you step out of your truck and then you look up and then you go like this. <laughs> well, you had oh, to, there was a guy that kept doing that. I'm like, dude, get in your truck. You're fucking it up for all of us. There's, yep, <sighs> yep, and yep. The, and then this. It, it, does that happen to me a lot of times or a couple of times where yeah. everybody's in your zone? Yeah, the crane is coming, and it comes that one guy that's outside his truck looking and looking, and they'll. Like, I don't know why they do it, but they'll get outside the truck and they'll just sit there with their hands on their waist <laughs> yeah. and they're just looking. That's that. I've been here a they're, long time. I've been here a long time. It's like, bro, like, get in your truck. What is that yeah. going to do? He's just sitting there. He's still going to do what he wants. He, it's not going to make him hurt. Like, what are you thinking when you're doing that? Like, yeah, like, hmm. Like, hmm. Magical powers. I'm going to make him come give him a load. Like, Maybe if he sees that I'm here he'll come to me yeah sees that i have my hands on my ways yeah. means I, I mean business i mean I, I don't know i i guess it's a it's a well i learned that that's not a good way so just no or <laughs> or when you uh when they see you cut in like the cranes right there and you're trying to go in and their spot is right there or you your spot is in front of where the crane is. Mm-hmm. He won't go attend you. He'll go attend everybody else and then make you wait last. Mm-hmm. Or they can see, from what I what I witnessed, they can see if they're like at spot A200 mm-hmm. and you're at the A300s and they see you're the only truck and you pull in, they'll either wait for the other trucks and load them up and then come get you. Or if they happen to not see you pull in, they'll come get you right away. But if they see you pull into your spot, they'll kind of like take some time and make you wait a little bit. Mm-hmm. I've, I've noticed that. That it, Maybe I'm crazy, but that, that's that's what I've noticed. Yeah. Where it's like, 
it, oh, it'd be cool if there was some kind of way to to validate if this guy's been here a while, a while like based on your RFID tag, and then the machine could have some kind of way to read it. Like, oh, this guy came in. It would be nice. Priority. Well, not what, priority. What, what I do with my dispatcher um, after thirty minutes or fifteen, oh. I tell them, "Hey, bro, send an email. These guys ain't giving me my load." Mm-hmm. All right, got you. Boom. And every time he sends an email within five minutes, here comes the crane or here comes the top handler to get the empty. And it's like I've learned that instead of. Yeah, that's that's the right way to the, do it. That communication. But yet again, it depends on the dispatchers because that's I know that there's effective. there's dispatchers where they won't do that. They yeah. won't send an email and they'll just be like, they okay, say, yeah, I got yeah, you. I got you. And don't. boom, they don't. Oh. You know, because but this guy, this so, guy, this guy, so Andy, emails. He's, he's good, man. He's. I send him a text, and every time I'll, I'll tell him too, like, "Hey, bro, get me like Ross as soon as you send the email within five minutes." Boom, I'm in. And it's because he doesn't send it like like my boy Kevin from one of the last episodes. He doesn't send it in all caps. Mm, he he sends it, it in all. He, he send it in all caps. They think you're screaming. So. They're screaming. They get offended. Well, Kevin, Kevin found out already. Yeah. So, uh, what's the longest you've been stuck in the port? <sighs> Man, this is when I first first got. Turned loose, Pier A. I did one load, one duel. I went in at uh, 7.30 and got out at 2 a.m. Mm. That was my first, like, Welcome awakening to, to the, the ports. Yeah. Yeah. That, and then the my dispatcher, he said, it's part of it, bro. You know, not that we this. It was a Monday. Uh, and he, he would always tell me that when I first started. Not that we this. You have a week to recover. You either start off good and end up bad or start off tough and then... Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, boom, the IBM, boom, 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 boom. Mm-hmm. Um, but luckily for me, with the ready mix job before, it was like that too. It was by the load, so yeah. it still took customers or finishers that took forever, and you never really knew how much you made that week till Thursday or Friday. Mm. Um, so I kind of brought that over to the ports, which kind of makes it easier, but it's still like a little headache mentally. Mentally, where it's like, damn, Monday, Tuesday, I did two two duels. Who knows how this is going to go? Like that's, that's, one, that's one thing I've learned is I I don't... I mean, there's work, mm-hmm. but as far as uh, secured income, you never know. Like, you never know. How, but you got some waiting time, right? Yeah. Yeah. After, after, <laughs> after two hours. How do you feel about the two hours? I mean, it's very common, so it's not really isolating your company, per se. No. Nah. But in, like, in the industry, why do you think they do the two hours? Like, who came up with that? I don't know. Honestly, you I think... You think it's fair? Well, I mean, it depends. If okay. you're hourly, then cool. Yeah, Give yeah. them the two free hours because you're still getting paid the other hours you wait in line. But as far as like getting paid by the load, who's who's those two free hours we give to whoever it is, the customer or the vessel? Yeah. I mean, we're still sitting there losing out on an extra load. Yeah. So I think it's different compared. Yeah. It's different perspective yeah. when you're by the hour because like oh, I've already got paid for. Uh, the first two hours, yeah, still gonna get paid. But if you're for the load, you don't get that extra pay till after two hours. And usually it's what an hour thirty, hour forty for a full duel, yeah, in and out. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't like the waiting time. <laughs> yeah, um, that's what I. That's what I like about what Port Pro has going on mm-hmm. with geo fencing. As soon as you hit arrived. The waiting time starts for the driver because sometimes there's companies or care um customers that want proof the waiting time they'll pay the waiting based on the ticket mm. and so, you know this pandemic exposed that the lines are not always starting right away right at the yeah. ticket at the pedestal well then even so, then how can you prove when you're waiting in line before you get that ticket at the speaker with geo fencing, it shows. No, no, I'm saying, but before all oh, this, yeah. like when it yeah, was, yeah, they just, don't believe you. They you wouldn't know? believe you. They wouldn't believe you. Yeah, so that that's a game changer. Like we're in 2022, like it's no. time that we switch it up and it's something that benefits us too, you know. And just as long as we don't go on e logs. The, the, the reason ports. the reason is because, say you wait two hours outside, right? Yeah. You get to the inside. You wait another two hours. You know what I mean? Fuck, that's four hours. Four hours. It, the old way, you know, that's or four if, hours or what for, if you get that you caught, didn't get paid. You missed out on two hours or of pay. what if you get caught right before lunch? And then when you go in, they go on lunch, and there goes another hour and a half, two hours mm-hmm. while they go on lunch. What's frustrating, what's frustrating is that those two free hours, by the time you're going to start getting paid, is usually the time you, you, you can get out sometimes. Yeah. Right? So 
Yeah, because usually a, a yeah. round trip is what hour thirty, hour forty five to clear in and out. On a yeah. hey, bring your empty real quick, get your yeah. load real quick. Yeah, usually. Based on uh, my math, might be wrong, but based on like fifty dollars an hour after two free hours, giving away um, mm, two free hours uh, uh, Monday to Friday in a year is like fifteen racks, almost eight between fifteen and eighteen racks if yeah. you, that we miss out on with that little glitch you know so anyway yeah it's not a lot of money it's a little it's a little bit oh it ain't okay <laughs> it ain't much <laughs> nah that's, 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 that's someone you know that's someone's yearly yeah. somewhere out there I don't know but this time that you got stuck did you did you uh, use a bucket <laughs> the at the puree yeah have you oh, ever? I learned my lesson bro I was, when I first started the ports I didn't think Oh, they, I'm sure they have porta potties. Yeah. Uh, lines. No, I, I carry. Um, I tend to drink a gallon of water. Yeah. Every day, sometimes even two. But yeah. because working night, day and night, um, the whatever I finish up in the daytime, I'll save that little galloncito, and use it for the nighttime. Yeah. And then like that, and then I'll. I learned that lesson. I keep a little gallon in there because a water bottle is not going to do much. Being there all day or back and forth, boom, boom, boom. Because mm-hmm. I mean, what is it? Uh, yeah, you can go to the restrooms at the trouble windows or whatever, but I'd rather go to my spot. And if I gotta wait in line, wait in line, and then use the gallon, and boom, I'm in my spot. I'm not letting other people or the line get longer or whatever, just based off the fact that I'm by the load. If it was per that by the hour, oh sure, I'll go sit in the restroom for a bit, you know, not worry about having to have a pee bottle. But yeah. That's that's my essential little galoncito. What about what number two? Uh, it's I don't really eat driving. I mean, I I'm so I like constantly going, going, going. Where it's like I'm just snacking on like chips, <laughs> not a solid meal. Where it's like, hey, yeah. I gotta, I got the the valves are, yeah. are kicking in. Um, well, you gotta be prepared. You never know. There's always there, a first there's times. Time. There's yeah. times, especially when it's like Yang Ming. Mm-hmm. Most likely, I'll, I'll I'll purposely be in the line next to the 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 porta john. Okay. And then right before I go in, boom, I'll, I'll go in there, which I don't like doing, but it's like I, I gotta go, I gotta go, you know. But then yet again, then these these guys that'll sit in the line and they're not trying to go to the speaker because oh, they're yeah. too early for their appointment. Yeah, yeah. It's like, bro, like. If you're too early for your appointment, don't be in the middle of the lanes where it's like only one truck can go in front of you and everybody yeah. else. Because they do, they do that when it's packed. Yeah, you got it's everyone jam-packed. crisscrossing. Crisscross, yeah, and it's like, man, what are you doing? But, I mean, what, what can we do? Yeah. What they don't make do? eye contact, bro. They don't. Mm-hmm. Or they know, so they're, they're in the back of their cab where nobody yeah. sees them. But Oh, then you, you ever had to wait behind one of them? And it's like, oh, bro, like, what the fuck? That you're waiting and it never moves. Not Everyone's yet. moving. Everyone's moving. That. This one doesn't move. Then you pull up and go see what's going on. He's not in his truck. He's fucking waiting, <laughs> like what you described. I'm like, fuck, yeah. dude, I could have gone around a long time ago. Nah, uh, that hasn't happened to me so, yet. Because, like I said, I mean, any line, I'm I'm usually just in a truck. And it's if it's if that line I'm in is not moving a lot or is stopped for like 10, 15 minutes, I'm looking the first chance I get to get out of there and boom, I'm out. Hmm. Um, oh, have you experienced that where you hopped around and then the one you moved into sucks? Now, now every you, now and then, now you want to look at the guy behind yeah, you. And then you, you got like, fuck. You move the line, and then the one you moved to was moving so was moving yeah, smoothly. You move yeah. into it, it stops, and then the one yeah. you just left is moving smoothly. Now it's like, yeah. bro, what the? But it's probably yeah, the guy behind you. They got to do this. They like it's driving, and they're like, they're like dumbass. They give you that look, like I got stay with you. Oh know? yeah. I'm sure that happens. What What would you change at the ports? Oh, the management, bro. Management. The management is a big deal. I mean, when I first started, I didn't know what all falls into play on what, what is done yeah. or why the top handlers go to this zone, go to that zone, yeah. or why the crane goes to this. But the management, bro, sucks. Uh, not all of them. Some of them. It's just like, bro, it's pointless. Mm-hmm. Like, you have this zone full of trucks waiting to get loaded. But you have this crane literally a zone down, just restacking containers. Yeah. Like, come give us our shit so we can get out of here. Yeah. Because, like I said, at the end of the day, some of us are by hour, but it's the ones that are by load that it's like, bro, you're affecting our bread and butter. You're affecting our income for our 
providing for our family. Like, there's been a couple of times where that happens to me, and I lose out on an extra duel that one shift. Mm-hmm. You know, it accumulates to what I make that that week. Um, but yeah, management and then security, man. Some of the security guards, they don't know what they're doing. Uh, at Maersk, <laughs> mm-hmm. there's times where they tell you, oh, the line's over there. And it happened to me where it's nah. like, I'm going to this spot. <laughs> that's the line. Go. That's the line. And uh, the first time I ever did that, I sat there for about two and a half hours. And it wasn't even the line for the spot I was burning the empty. Uh, but I just, the security told me to go there, go there. And then I just was like, man, next time I'm just go by myself. Go check my spot. And that's what I do now. Is just they'll tell me, "I'll go there." Oh, yeah, I'll go there. Yeah, I'll go all the way around. <laughs> then they run. Ah. Hey, yeah. how do you feel about people that don't do ports? But then when they see uh, people like us complain about it, um, they say, "Like, well, who? if you don't like it, why don't you get the fuck out?" Like, like you're who? always bitching. Oh, like people that aren't in the industry. Yeah, but they they see complaints and they're like, you know, it's, it's just so bad. Why don't you leave? Well, why don't you leave? What? What? I'm, I'm I'm asking you. Like, why don't you? Oh, leave? me? Yeah. I mean. I'm not gonna leave because I'm. I make good money. Okay. Thankfully, it's yeah. a good. It's a good career. Good job. Um, I'm not gonna leave because I'm not gonna go back to something that I don't enjoy waking up to day in and day out. I enjoy waking up to the. I enjoy sleeping in the truck. Yeah. Like uh, just because I was sick these last two weeks. Um, but I do day and night, mm-hmm. Monday through Friday. Wait, you, got, you got the COVID? Nah, COVID? nah, nah. Some other stuff. Uh. Yeah. With my <laughs> okay, uh, nah, with you my, don't got, with yeah. my blood, but nah, no, no COVID right. over here. Okay, well, thankfully, right. okay. um, yeah, no, I mean, I I love the whole trucking thing, man. I'm not an over the road guy, but just from the port and coming back, I mean, it's, uh, it's not bad to the point where I don't enjoy it and want to look something else. I mean, where else am I gonna go? Over the road, flatbed, mm-hmm. tanker driver, to be on an hourly rage. I like what, I, what I'm doing. I enjoy it. Like I said, I enjoy it day in and day out. Yeah, it's 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 fun when little situations like that happen where it's like jam packed because it's like damn, it can go so smooth. But then here comes the dun 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 of it where it's like okay, it's traffic. Yeah, it's packed. Uh, something's going on. Cool. Uh, but to the people that like to speak. I just find it funny if you've never driven a truck and you've never been in the field. Yeah, it's easy for you to say, "Oh, well, you don't like it, quit." But why would I quit and take a step down? In my case, if I go back to my other jobs, yeah, I might be making the same amount of money. So how is that? That's taking that's taking a step back. It it doesn't make sense to me. Um, it leaves the field open for someone else to experience it. And then nothing gets solved. I mean, I don't see it like that. I just like, like I said, I, I just, I, I, I did it. I got into it. Saw it as opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, and did it. I mean, I, I try to convince my younger brothers to get their CDO. They, you know, they're 18 now, 19. I try to tell them, bro, get it. It's, I know what I'm telling you. But they're in that stage where they. YOLO. YOLO. I'm like, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. I was like that. I know what I'm telling you. Yeah. 16 through 21, I was doing those warehouse jobs getting paid thursdays oh let's go party friday let's go party saturday come monday i only have enough for gas and lunch for the week like i I did that that's why a couple of friends of mine are like hey bro you work too much you have no life i'm like well i did my fun to this day i did my fun going out partying drinking it's it's cool but it's just it's not it doesn't gain my interest no more like even my 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 wife she tells me you work too much why like because I, I want to. I can. I see it as a. I see it as a point where, um, if you can work as much as you can right now and stack your money and do whatever you can, do it. Because, um, like I tell my friends that tell me I have no life, it's cool. I enjoy it though. I enjoy not having a life. I enjoy working day and night at the ports. It's just something about being in that truck, bro. Like. People see it as, oh, you just sit there and drive all day and sit on your ass. Yeah, you might see it like that. Me personally, it's like a like a like a therapy. Like it's just you in the truck. You know where you're going. You know the ports. You know where to go. Nobody's like on your ass. So I just put the music on, go to the port where I gotta drop it off. Dispatcher, wait, what's my next move? Mm-hmm. Boom. And it's like that. But the whole time it's just like a you just it. People have so much going on in life, bro. It, it, even me myself. 
you, everybody, that when I'm in that truck, it's just I forget about everything. Yeah, that sure did. You, um, you still like those drives, man? I don't like the long drives. I'm not a. I was yeah. doing container deliveries to Utah. At first two trips, it was cool. Oh hell yeah! I've never been over yeah. here. It's awesome. Yeah, you were excited. I was excited, yeah. but then after the third, fourth time, I'm like. Here we go. Oh, here we go to Vegas. Oh, here we go to Utah. You got bored or what? It got bored. Yeah, mm-hmm. you go through your music playlist. You go through every playlist you went to. You mm-hmm. start listening to random podcasts. You just, mm-hmm. just, I don't know how those over the road guys do it. I mean, that's yeah. that's a different ball game. And uh, do you have kids? Not yet. No. And the, and yeah, yeah, over the road. Imagine over the road oh, with man. kids. I mean, even now at the ports, like I said, working day and night. I don't have really much time to even be with my girl or take her out so mm-hmm. every now and then i gotta take a saturday off for a friday night like hey let's go bowling let's go yeah somewhere yeah. um but luckily she she's she uh she's very supportive she she yeah. understands she's she's with the with the with the the goals and uh yeah it's just her support it means a lot bro like i know there's you guys have that pillow talk with the goals and stuff oh, yeah. yeah she's she's that that's <laughs> a lot of people that's a good. lot of my friends say i i got engaged oh i'm not married yet but it's coming um they say i got engaged too young but i mean this girl from day one the way she has her mindset like pillow talk you say like goals like what she wants to do what she's trying to do and she supports what I'm trying to do with the whole working and not having much time to go out because we want to get a house or this, this, and that. Yeah, that'll help a lot. Like, it's, it's, uh, that support is yeah, a lot, yeah. bro. So, yeah, she's cool with it. She's okay with, uh, well, she works at CSR. We're, we're at that next gen yard. So she kind of, mm, okay. she kind of knows the field of it. So she'll throw jabs at me, like, hey, you should get your own truck and I'll dispatch you or, mm-hmm. or help you out with that. I'm like, well, if, if it's meant to be, it'll happen. I told her. I would love yeah. to have my own truck. Yeah. I tell everybody I'd love to have my own truck. But you're getting that experience. I right feel now. like it's a big step to yeah. where I need to really pinpoint down and get the experience down of how the game works. Yeah. How to see if it's worth the pay, stuff like that, you know? So um we'll see when that happens. But yeah. Eventually. Did I did I ask you yet? You think the ports will ever change with, with the time you've been here? Um it looks like the same thing to you. Like, you you haven't been in like a decade, but nah, I've only been from there. From what I remember, me with my experience, it doesn't feel like it'll change. But I don't we still think, try. I don't think it's gonna change in the aspect of uh, no matter how much we bring up issues, no matter how much we bring up, hey, this is happening, this is going on. Yeah, I don't see it anytime soon changing because at the end of the day, the management's gonna do what they want. Uh, but I do feel like slowly but surely our voices are being heard through the platforms of like containeros port runners chuchos because everybody shares their experiences through that yeah so you know like outside people think oh they're just instagram pages it's like no nah, it's 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 a platform mm-hmm. it, it it's a platform where hey this is going out the ports boom it may take time for the issues to come out or to be put eyes on mm-hmm. uh but i feel like that these platforms are eventually gonna get our voices out there where it's like hey you guys gotta listen to us like okay. listen to our side and let's come to an agreement but as far as like hey okay let's see what the truckers want to say let's see what the union workers want to say let's agree on it. it i don't think that's ever gonna happen because it's always gonna be that bad blood yeah like, that exactly someone said there's already been too much uh shit that just happened on both sides so it'll never be like the funny thing is is when when (laughs) when these these union workers go on instagram bro and it's like they're these instagram gangsters these 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 twitter fingers you you had your i've had my fair shares yeah i've had my fair shares and it's just uh me just saying exactly what i saw at the port hey this is my situation is my problem blah 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 i've seen guys on their phone walking around in the clerks not paying attention you know i've gone up to one when i first started like hey i need help oh you need to go over there and she's on her phone but she's there supposedly to help us so it's like okay like i've i've seen this why can't you just tell me where this zone is why do you have to be rude and say oh no go away you have to go over there somewhere else <laughs> like yeah. okay but you were on your phone it's not like you were on the computer or anything you literally have the phone in your hand uh but yeah that's that's my funny thing is on instagram when they want to comment um 
and then you reply and then they block you <laughs> mm. and it's like okay well you had your two cents i'm gonna give you my two cents and that's that. and that's how it is back and forth back and forth and now the hate is a little higher now you guys dislike each other more but well, the negativity always gets it's, the it's, most engagement i don't know why like be, be, uh, you could get a good comment and cool you know but you get that the negativity going and i've seen threads on my thing bro like you guys go at it hard man <laughs> like it's like <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Even, I don't even. I know like, it goes harder on the DMs. I'll just leave it at that. It um, goes. It goes. It goes. It goes. It goes harder on the DMs because some people don't want to portray as, "Hey, I'm this type of guy," or "I'm I'm an asshole." But it's like, yeah, but the, there's a problem here. So you got a problem. Let's talk about it. Don't, the minute it escalates to something personal, like, "Hey, I don't like the way that I'm treated here," right, and it's and it goes from. Well, you well you guys suck too. No, you suck, and then it's like your mom's fat. <laughs> it's like where does that? What is that, that's, that's what like I'm saying. you're out of ammo. You know, what like is, you're out of a valid. Uh, yeah, I mean, like my thing is when when I and I don't know. I mean, maybe it's the way we say it, but it's like like per se, like that issue with the clerk that was on her phone. <laughs> like yeah. how I'm saying, I'm specifically saying what happened, what yeah. what I went through, and like, oh, well, it's because blah 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 blah. Like yeah. even when you had your your Instagram uh, live, when you had your truck, you were doing some uh, when you had first spray painted the the black letters on the doors. Yeah. With the with yeah. the with the plastic the dip. Stencil. Some guys were commenting too and I was like, bro, he's 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 just doing his truck. Like why if you don't like it, you don't have to be here. Like I, I don't know, bro. People are weird. Yeah. People are weird. <laughs> it's like I missed that one, otherwise I would have been sad that day. Yeah, I mean yeah. that's why I keep my Instagram private. I remember one with yours, uh, they they were they started talking shit about your car like what what does this car have to do with <sighs> what does your car have to I do i know with which it? one you're talking about i'm like bro he he yeah it was some guy i guess he's a union worker or whatever but he was like how do you how do you guys end up arguing about cars man he brought it uh you know what I, he brought it up he said something about oh uh, uh we he started going we started going back and forth and then <laughs> he ran out of ammo and brought up my car i was like bro what does my car have to do with this port stuff we're discussing like okay and incidents like that that's where i'm like what what are you talking about but i mean i just i stopped going back and forth because like all right this guy's talking about my car oh okay i never brought about my car i'm talking about the ports <laughs> yeah like what is that so there's no uh, respectable debate going on at that point it, yeah it's, it, it'll be hard maybe one day there can be or maybe mm -hmm. uh, maybe there's like i said maybe there's there's union workers who are willing to like hey this is the issue and I've I've had them too where um, I'm at the at the ports and I'll tell like the clerks like hey bro how come I haven't gotten my load or and they're 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 cool like oh this is what's going on you know they're blah 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 I'm like all right cool appreciate it mm -hmm. you know like they're letting me know because yeah. we can only see what we what, what we see oh it's a container I'm here waiting for my load the crane is moving fucking containers uh fuck come get my load but then if you go ask the clerk like hey bro how come i can't get my container or you don't be like these guys that are sitting there and they're walking around uh the where the trucks go by walking around like hey you know like i've been waiting here and it's just like they're just gonna keep looking at you because you're, you're making your like i don't know bro you're making yourself look bad like get back in your truck and just just wait it out it, it, it's, it's part of it i'm sure after a week or two weeks people will get that down like hey it, it, it's part of it they're they're gonna come when they can mm -hmm. i mean best thing i could do is hey, tell your dispatcher send an email that's what works for me after 15 30 minutes and then it's always within five ten minutes here comes the top handler or here comes the crane to yeah. my spot and hey, as far as their point of view have, have the few that came on here helped you in any way to see a, pers a different perspective they, you know what the episode that did was uh lucas luca i paid attention to that one yeah um and la i mean he's he says stuff from inside that's like hey uh, like you say i mean it, until we hear it from somebody in there we can only have our own perspective of how things are going on in there so um, that episode cleared out a couple things, but still, <laughs> the management sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I, I'm but, sure they agree. Yeah, um, they agree. Yeah, as well. that was that was an eye opener right there. That episode. If you guys haven't seen it, go check it out. It's it's very uh, descriptive. 
I believe that was number 11, right? I don't remember. Yeah, Luca. It was one of the first ones. But yeah, that was a good episode, man. Yeah. It's a lot of info on there. Yeah, we got to try to get along, guys. Come on. We ain't getting, we ain't getting nowhere with this back and forth nah, shit. We're all working class. I mean, it's like um, the way I see it, uh, you guys need those containers out of your yards to make space for the new ship. And we need money to move those out. So let's 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 work together. But yeah, I don't I don't think that's gonna happen. They'll try to make new things, but I think eventually what's gonna happen is automation's gonna come back more. Yeah. Because I mean like for us it's beneficial because they don't have lunch breaks. <laughs> but yet again, that's for us as truck drivers. But if we were the union workers, like Luca said, it would be crazy. Like, hey, bro, these robots are taking over our jobs. Like, we, and we're next. And, and we're on next. and on and on. Like, even us. Look at these automatic trucks that are coming out. Yeah. These fully electric trucks that drive themselves. I've seen a couple on Instagram and YouTube. Mm-hmm. And it's like, damn, like, it's, it's getting crazy. Because a lot of these younger generations don't want to be a truck driver. They want to be making money on social media or the easy money, as they call it. But it's like... Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, hey, send me a hundred dollars and I'll give you ten thousand dollars in return. Oh, the little scams going around the cash app. I don't know how people fall for those, bro. Flip the five hundred into five thousand. Send me the five hundred first. Send me the five hundred and I'll gladly send you forty five hundred. Yeah. Out of my own money. It, come on. Yeah, there's some stuff that people do that is just so embarrassing that they fall for it that they don't bring it up. So that's why those scams keep happening. Like, then you're going to come and share that with the world. Hey, I just gave someone 500 bucks to make five grand. You're, like, so embarrassed. You don't even probably bring it up, you know? Yeah. But. It's crazy, though. I mean, even the scammers, bro, that call and try to uh, say they're the IRS or yeah, blah, blah, blah. I've had a couple call me about my car. Oh, yeah. Car, yeah. car extended warranty and i'm like bro i sold my car about a year ago i don't have that but i go along with it yeah like oh can you can tell the accent they're scammers i'm like oh what's your making model so i tell oh it's a ferrari sierra uh, mm-hmm. four by four and like are you sure that's the model I'm like yeah that's, that's a ferrari sierra damn you know? and then they'll hang up because i guess they finally realized yeah it's like like i don't know bro it's, it's crazy where do you see yourself in in five years maybe with that ferrari or what <laughs> Ferrari Sierra, <laughs> uh, five years. Uh, that's that's crazy, man. Um, Cause it's crazy how time can go by fast. Um, I still see myself at the ports. Um, God willing, still alive, with health, uh, being able to pass my DOT physical and keep driving. Uh, possibly living in Long Beach, closer to the ports, because that drive from the valley down here on a daily is with gas going up right now yeah and the v8 that i drive yeah it's 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 crazy um yeah i still see myself uh like austin says turning and earning it's the time of the day yeah 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 shout yeah. out to austin and lamar yeah. um <laughs> yeah just still driving man driving and bge by then maybe bge for you baby's gotta eat by then maybe yeah. maybe who knows mom uh, yeah because i'll be i'll be hitting 30 pushing 30 so yeah well, you guys maybe, have that talk figure it out maybe maybe even have my own truck by then i don't know yeah who, yeah who knows i think five years six years should be good enough i think so but yeah. even then i'm not in a rush and then in five years we could see how things really settle down as far as all this stuff that's going on right now like the like who knows, clean maybe, trucks, AB5, yeah. all that shit. Know which way to run, you know? I don't know how some of these trucks are still going into the ports, bro. They got bumpers missing and windshields are cracked and doors are... I don't know how that works. I don't know how people feel safe driving those. You got to watch out for those. Those are the make it happen, guys. Yeah, I see them. If I see them behind me in that strip going to Maersk, behind me hauling ass, mm-hmm. I'm moving to the side. Like, go ahead, bro. Yeah, you oh, know, you're... tortugas a la derecha. You already know that. <laughs> yeah, go on, bro. The, the road is yours. The road or the world. Hey, uh, a day in the life of of Mr. Jesus. Day in the life. Uh, well, wake up, 
like Mondays, wake up four in the morning, go to the yard, pick up the truck, go get my empty and make a line wherever I got to go for 7 a.m. Uh, ports all day, day shift into night shift and then get pre-dispatched for the next day, sleep in the truck and get up at four or five again, depending where the empty is, what yard um, and then go make a line and again, same routine Monday through Friday. What do you do for food? <laughs> you like to the stop truck, or you I like have, to uh, I don't like to stop bro mm. cuz it's you stock like, up then you got yeah you got to you got to find a place to park the truck if you're bobtailing eh maybe but even then it's kind of hard so I like to just stock up for the week like in my truck my personal truck in the back I have my drinks my mm. chips uh my sopas maruchans those come in clutch yeah cuz we have a little hot water dispenser at the yard so oh, okay <clears throat> in between shifts or when I get hungry, go throw some water, take it to the port. By the time I get there, it's already cooked. And ah, while good, I'm waiting in good line. Good little rhythm. Um, yeah, Monday to Friday, that's it. Work Saturdays too. Sundays if there's work at the ports. Uh, if not, then I'm either at home playing Call of Duty, playing playing video games, or either out with my grandma eating or my lady or like bowling. Other than that, it's mostly just, just that. Same old routine. Just same old, same old. How do you feel about, well, the future and whatnot, right? Uh, the things que cuidar, your health and all that? Or? Oh, man, that's a big thing. Yeah. I mean, to all those truck drivers that have medicines to take or pills and you kind of dodge them off because you want to just drive, 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 don't. Because that's what I did and I ended up in the hospital. You did? What happened? Um, well, I'm diabetic. Oh, so, you're diabetic? Yeah, I'm a type 2. Um, and How long have you been? Uh, for like a year. How did you find out? Like, how? <laughs> I mean, it runs on both sides of my family. Yeah. But uh, one day I just had a very bad cotton mouth. And for like a couple of days, I knew something wasn't right. Um, so I went to the, to the hospital and that's when they told me like, hey, your, your sugars are high. My sugar was like at five something. Like if what's you, the normal it should be between eighty and one thirty five I believe. The fuck, that's a yeah. high. So when it's that high, it's like you can get into a. Sh uh, I think they call it a, a sugar coma or a diabetic coma, where mm. like your stuff starts shutting down or you can get a stroke. Um, and that was a that was a real awakening because my first thought was, damn, I'm not gonna be get cleared for my DOT physical. Like, I'm I'm screwed. But just watch what you eat. Um. And then last couple of months, haven't really been taking my pills, not paying any attention to it, just working, working, just watching what I eat, but not taking the pills. And uh, that led to some some stuff to happen to me two weeks ago, <clears throat> about two weeks ago. Um, and then went to the hospital and was there for about a week running tests to see what was going on what was causing the pain and what's what, like pinpointing it you know because yeah. with the whole diabetes it's they gotta monitor everything control everything before they can uh do any any other work to pinpoint what's going on so uh that happened and then they basically just told me like you have to take your pills because if you don't uh sooner or later you're gonna start losing your vision uh stuff can happen on your feet where they got to chop off your feet amputate you you're at higher risk for an infection, right? If you get a cut, yeah, it, your 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 immune system or whatever is not as strong. So any little cut takes longer to heal. Any mm -hmm. little bump or whatever. Um, so they basically just told me you gotta gotta be on my on my stuff and, and take my pills. How does that make you feel though? The meds. It sounds like they want you on that for life, or is it to regulate something? Or have you been curious <sighs> about natural cures, or you know, all these other remedies, or? Or it's, it's easy I'm, to say that when you it, don't have diabetes. No, nah, it, it's, it, I understand the whole pills thing, but I know in the long run, all those pills that make me take, it's going to have an effect on your, on your liver or something down the line. So, um, luckily it's not for life. It's just while I get everything controlled where you lower your A1C and all that, and then mm. boom, you can step back. Um, but, <clears throat> um, yeah, like I, I told the doctor, I'll, I'll take the pills, um, but it's just, just while everything gets controlled, <clears throat> um, but the whole week I couldn't, the first week I was in the hospital this last week, I was at home, but I couldn't drive cause they had me on oxycodone for the pain. Um, so that gave me like drowsiness and all that. So that was, that was a tough one. But 
um yeah just take your pills guys take your pills and and follow the protocols because but do your research just in case I've, I've heard of people that reverse it like just yeah it's it's just it's reversible they told me it's you know? reversible um i'm at i'm not at the point where because i'm not type one type one it, i think type one is not reversible where okay. your body doesn't produce insulin oh, okay, um, okay, right i'm at type see, two where it, it produces something it produces insulin but not as much for your metabolism or whatever okay okay so uh, you still got it bro you could yeah you know you got it's, this it's man. just you know being young you know mm-hmm. you know like, oh fuck that i feel good I'm, i don't need my pills but you don't really know what's going yeah. on so um yeah that, and the head that. of household and you got people counting on you like yeah it, it that, motivates that was, you to you take it serious that's the the stress that gets man i mean like people say oh money isn't everything but um i see it as without money we can't eat we can't so yeah money is basically everything as cliche yeah. as it sounds but yeah. i mean it is it's, it's just the intention like you, you could be a a kind person a rich kind person it just uh amplifies what you already exactly. are exactly you could be a piece of shit rich guy <laughs> Still, you know i know there's a lot of them out there in the world hey, um hey what's up <coughs> uh but yeah man i mean i mean i'm, I'm sure people don't see it like that or people take it the wrong way when people say money is everything but it's it's the way that you understand it money isn't everything but financial stability is yeah, so i guess that sounds better financial stability than hey money is everything yeah. so money isn't yeah. everything but it, it takes that to feed my children yeah it takes that so. to have a roof over your head it takes that to for you to have your phone to call people mm-hmm. Uh, by church food. loves getting it every Sunday. Uh, I don't go to church. So I'm just saying that like, <laughs> money is everywhere. You know, like yeah. a- everyone. Anyways, moving on before we get canceled by the Mormon yeah. church, yeah, or something. Or they first start, I they start coming down to your podcast, <laughs> wanting to do an episode. We want to clap back at at, yeah. at that at the Jesus de la Torre yeah. guy. I like your T-shirt. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. Favorite wrestler of all time, the greatest. Had to bring it on for the for the episode. Passed away. Yeah, two thousand five. It's crazy. the The first uh, WWE episode live I ever went to was the day in Minneapolis where they announced his his death. Because my dad, my father lives up there. Okay. Uh, so he took me as a surprise, and it happened to be at the Target Center where they did the whole hey the day after he died. Um. So that that was that was crazy. Um. But. Yeah, that, that's that's what that was my childhood and Dragon Ball Z was that WWE people saying it was fake and you were in denial because you were a little kid till yeah, you grow up yeah. and it's like hey that shit was fake isn't that right they yeah. study it they practice yeah. it um but yeah my favorite was the Undertaker growing up oh the old yeah. old Undertaker yeah Brothers of Destruction Kane yeah those were the good days man that's when that's when wrestling was awesome. Those were the go to the mall and steal Pokemon card days. <laughs> <laughs> or buy them off of the ice cream truck that goes by the neighborhood and he sells them for 20 bucks. Yeah, I got some stories, man, but maybe another time. Yeah. <laughs> At a young age, you already start, you know, out there scheming, you know, like. Man, I did something. Plotting I, some shit, you I know. I did something I've, I've never done again. Tell us. I was, uh, I was like 10. 10 or 12 no 10 or 8 8 or 10 um and the ice cream truck would always come by the house yeah and he always had uh Yu-Gi-Oh cards so one day it was just me and my grandma she was out in the back doing something in the yard and i saw 20 dollars on the kitchen table kids don't do this don't do this this is not this is just a dumb experience i did <laughs> um so she had 20 dollars and i grabbed them and went and bought Pokemon cards for like five bucks as I'm coming back into the house, she's in the she's in the living room and she sees me with the deck of cards <laughs> and cash. Yeah. She's like, "Where'd you get all that money?" I'm like, "I don't know." The ice cream truck driver gave it to me. She's like, "What? Te lo dio?" Like, "Sí, ma, no sé, me lo dio." And I'm like, "No mm-hmm. sé, ma, él me lo dio, él me lo dio." And well, you're lying went, ass. Yeah, <laughs> I was lying. So she goes and talks to him and then tells Fucking him. Fucking pervert! Why are you giving my kid money? And then she comes back and she's like, "I'm gonna burn your hands. Don't you ever steal money from me?" Blah blah blah. You know the pep talk, and uh, that was the one and only time I ever did that. Mm. Or some Yu-Gi-Oh cards, but that was that was tough. That was a fun little experience. How was childhood? It wasn't too bad, man. I mean, you say you're raised by. By my mom and my grandma. Yeah. Uh, my dad, he unfortunately was never around. 
Uh, so my dad figures were my uncle, my mom's brother, and my grandpa. Yeah. Um, but they were they were also working, so they didn't they weren't really there. It was just basically my mom, and my grandma. So um, then I had siblings. Uh, they met, my mom made the most of it. She 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 tried to provide as much as she could. Growing up, like any other kid, oh, why can't I have this? Why can't I have that? So you had those moments where it's like, oh, I hate my life or I hate my mom, blah, 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 blah. Um, but, you know, as you get older, you realize, like, hey, she had four kids on her own at a young age. She yeah. had me at 16. Okay. So, um, you know, it's thinking back to how, like, I remember how I, was, how I was as a kid, you know, not understanding why I couldn't get this, why kids would get Christmas gifts or why we'd go to family events and... My cousins were getting Christmas gifts, and I wasn't getting one. That's awkward. Like, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I, it, it was awkward, but uncomfortable. I... Uncomfortable. Uncomfortable, yeah, because, I mean, you didn't get no gift. But I would when I, we would go, I would see it as, I'm going to go with my cousins um, and hang out with them. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think going through that childhood of like that, like, fortunately not having as much as stuff as other kids and seeing it kind of helped me put me in a position where it's like hey i gotta bust my ass for my shit like i never yeah. had nothing no hand me downs let's let's go let's go make money or get something you want a car okay let's go don't go to college go get your 30 forty thousand dollar car and get a agency job and make the best of it as long as you can make your car payments and your rent and whatever and manage it from there and that's how i've been ever since man just going with my gut Mm -hmm. I mean, not really. Not, I never really had nobody tell me, "Hey, do this, do that," or "You should do this," or "You should do that." It's just more of a, like seeing what people are doing, what's working, and just, "Hey, this opportunity came up." Boom. There's this one guy that uh, really, really helped me out in Alabama. My first job. His name is Miguel. Um, he would always pep talk me because uh, he he was the warehouse manager. Yeah. So he would tell me, "Hey, do this, do that." He would always give me consejos. Like, he's from NDF, so he would give me consejos. And he gave me this one uh, quote, one saying that really stuck to me to this day, and I use it day in and day out. He said, Si ves el tren, montate. Porque si se te pasa, ya no va a regresar. Hmm. So at first, I kind of like, hmm, what does that mean? But then as time goes by, I kind of see like, hey, I got an opportunity to get my CDL. I got it. I got an opportunity to come back here, boom, jumped on it. I got an opportunity to come in to the ports, boom, jumped on it. So it's kind of been synced in. Uh, but, yeah, it just that was basically my childhood. I wasn't really a school kid. <laughs> I would be getting calls to detention all the time, yeah. getting calls home, like, hey, your kid's talking a lot. Yeah. Your kid's not, not, not turning in his homework. So did you, was, um, did you do some lost and found shopping? I would go to the lost and found and, and swap sweaters. <laughs> Sometimes. I did that a couple. In middle school, I did that. Yeah. In middle school, I did that. Middle school, yeah. I'd go and like, oh, that's mine. Shame on you, man. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it, it happens to everybody. Yeah. Damn, I was, what, what would I call that? Being, being ghetto ratchet? I don't know what I was being, but I would it's just, just be. It's just called being an introvert. It just, uh, it's just you importing export you're taking in a, a <laughs> sweater and taking out another sweater you know look you know look. Look, look where it brought us to the import export industry with that uh, the childhood what hardship sticks with you like that you feel made you be a certain way today oh, boy that's a tough one um not having that dad figure mm. you know not having that 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 male figure twenty four seven like, hey son, let's go to the park, let's go play basketball, let's go play catch, uh, let's go to dodge a game, let's go do this like just the son and dad activities like stuff you see on movies as cliche mm -hmm. as it sounds but like when you when you don't have that it's like damn like I wish I had that you know what if you did have it and it's not as good as you imagine it and you imagine it so good that it makes you feel depressed I guess we'll never know right. But that's one thing too. Like, yeah, what if uh, he was around, but he was working too much? Like my perspective. Yeah. Per se. That's why with my lady, I tell her let's let's hold off on the kids right now. Yeah. Because I don't want to have a kid, and I'm working day and night, and I can't be there to help you. I'm gonna help you what Saturday nights and Sundays, are my only day off. That's, I mean, not to be selfish, but that's gonna be tough. Yeah. Because you're at home with the kid. 
and I'm over here working day and night, not even being able to help you or switching off, you know. So I told her I don't. I told her that that's. I don't want to do what happened to me, where it's not that dad figure. Like the stuff I wanted to do with my dad growing up, I'm gonna make sure I do that with my kid mm-hmm. when it comes. I'm gonna share that because it's just if I didn't get to experience it as a kid, I at least want to experience it as a dad. Like, hey son, let's go play catch. Like that whole perspective. Because I, I mean, I played baseball. But it was always my grandpa oh, okay. taking me there. Yeah, you know, or my uncle. They're they're the ones that were like, "Hey, let's go play catch," or "Hey, let's go try basketball." Do you feel you want closure? Like, is there any way to get a hold of him, or he's just out of the picture for good? No, there's a way to get a hold of him, but you choose there, not there, to. There, there, there is. I, I, I'll reach out to him every now and then. Um, and I mean, I'm I'm at a point where it's like I don't want to hold grudges because at the end of the day. He's 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 my dad. He's he's my blood. Um, <clears throat> but it's just those those little moments that I wish I would have had or had had. I'm not gonna get them. So it's kind of like, mm, you know, it's kind of like a tough pill to swallow. And then but. it's hard to to feel something, right? When there's like that Tupac song, like God forbid, it's just an example, you know, yeah. based on the lyrics, you know. Like, you passed away and I didn't cry because cause my anger wouldn't let me feel for a stranger, yeah. you know? like I've thought about that, like... Um, you don't want to have a regret. I went a couple of years, with, uh, like two years or a year without hearing from him or reaching out to him uh, until he reached out to me and said uh, he would pay for my airplane ticket to go out there because he wanted to have all his kids with him for his 50th birthday. <clears throat> and uh, during that time... Uh, I was, it was before my CDL, so I was still, like, not knowing what I was wanting to do, so uh, I told him, if you pay for it, I'll go, but I'm not paying it, just because of that crutch that I've that I've had, where it's like, nah, you want me to go? Pay for it. I'll go. Um, but fast forward, and it's just, it just comes with, with maturing, man. I mean, realizing the fact that he's he's getting old, and I don't want it to be where it's like, Hey, his time's up, and it's like, damn, I wish I could have talked to him or, or said, hey, why weren't you there? Blah blah blah. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, we're just at that phase where he'll reach out. I'll reach out to him, and uh, like, hey, how's everything going? And have you had it. that talk, or are you planning to someday? We we did. Okay. Uh, we did, and I just, I'm glad we got it out of the way because there was a lot of uh, misunderstanding I had. Uh, but even then, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I saw that I knew that it's like, there's no line, there's no denying this. Like why, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that talk happened and it was a long talk and I'm glad that talk happened because it kind of like, I guess, set back our father and son thing where it's like, Hey, I'm not mad at him as much or don't hold that little grudge. Uh, but it's part of it. It's part of the cards you deal with in life, I guess. But yeah, childhood wasn't too bad. It was pretty cool. So at the moment, or you had mentioned grandpa yeah. growing up, like a father figure, right? Or the yeah, he, your uncle? Both of them. Okay. Both of them. But other than that, who who inspired you? Or who inspires you now? Like, uh, to go hard. Who do you you know what I mean? My grandma. Yeah. Okay. And my grandma does. Um, she's. She's my everything. She's she's who I do it for. Uh, she's she uh she's 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 a rock man. She's 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 my she's the one I get up for every day. And uh, I hate to get emotional, but um yeah, she's she's the one I do it for. I mean, it's not it's not excluding my mom, it's not excluding my my fiance, but my grandma, man, she's she's it. She's she's she's, she's, she's my motivation. Uh, always has been, always will be. Uh, to just keep going. Just keep going and keep going and and do it. I mean, <clears throat> it's been hard getting her to stop from working uh, because she's just always been that. 
Oh, that she likes to get her hustle on. She's still. been that hustler, man. She's she's always been that hardworking lady where she'll take two days off work or one, and she has to be back at work. She doesn't feel doesn't feel good at home, and and I yeah. understand her, you know, because it's just, it's just how she is. Um, but yeah, she's that's my inspiration, my motivation to just keep going. I mean, what have you learned from her? <sighs> What's your I, favorite consejo? She, her number one consejo, and I, don't, I think I'm a, I'm a mess it up, but it's somewhere along the lines where it says, Dios ahorca, pero no te mata. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, here we go. You know? Dios aprieta, pero there you go. no te ahorca. No te ahorca. Um, so in English, that would mean like he, he kind of... Like God will choke you, but he won't kill you. Yeah, like he'll he'll, he'll he, test you. Yeah, yeah. Like he'll really, really test you. Right to you. the edge when you think you're about Where's to like, lose hey, bro, your shit. It's like, hey, bro, you're about to lose your shit or you're about to give up, but you, you just, yeah. just got to keep keep having faith. Yeah, you know? yeah. That is um, a good one. That, that's a really good one. Because uh, like like I said, when I, when I left my job and went to school, and I, had, I still had my phone bill, cable bill, mm -hmm. car payment, car insurance, rent uh, with my mom, and they were like, oh, no, well, We'll wait it out till you start working. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to figure it out. And, yeah, just fell back a whole month on bills. And uh, she would always tell me. She would see me stressed out. And she's always the one to say, Acuérdate, mijo. Dios, uh, Dios aprieta, pero no ahorca. So just, just go. Keep going. And, yeah. It's, it's any, any little situation I have, whether it's financial or, or something pops up or something unfortunate happens. And it's like Ooh. you dwell on it. Um, my best advice is just, just why dwell on it, bro? Like, just have as cliche as it sounds, and I don't like to put religion out there. I'm not a religious guy. Like, I don't go to church, but I do have like, we can see that, San Judas, you know, stuff at home yeah. that we grow you up on. I believe in something. I believe in something, but it's like, with prayer and faith, bro, is <sighs> it's crazy. You just have to have the patience, and just know that it's gonna come when it comes. Um, and I've recently been learning about that, and it's true. It's true. Having faith is a big thing. You don't have to pray, but just having that faith, a lot of stuff can get lined up and worked out without you even knowing. You know, yeah. like without you even thinking about it day in by out, you're just going with the flow. And next, you know, boom. Oh shit, this happened. Like recently, All right, when you were about to give up, you're like, made it. Yeah, like with yeah. my with my credit. Nobody yeah. ever teached me about credit. My credit was shitty. Yeah, about a year ago. And just started to get on it. It was like, damn, it's going to take a process. It's going to take long. And the first couple of weeks, I was thinking about it. Like, oh, it's going to take forever to get my credit up, blah, 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 blah. And it's just having faith that like, one day it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Boom. Fast forward, I'm getting up there. Cleared out stuff I had on there. And now it's just <laughs> waiting for the points to go up. So yeah, I'm at, a, I'm at a point where I never thought I'd be at this point. Point. Yeah. Pointage. So it's We're like, not it's, top that. Like. We're not. Credit is everything, man. If you think about it, shit. You can credit. have all the money in the world, yeah. but if your credit is shitty or you have bad bad uh, history or collections, you ain't getting nothing, bro. <laughs> You're not. Yeah. I learned that the hard way. You get that car with the 33% uh, interest rate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm getting no money down, but look at my payments. Yeah. What would you be doing if, if you were in trucking? <sighs> I don't know. I wanted to be an electrician. I wanted to be uh, an office worker. I wanted to be. I wanted to be a baseball player one day. Um, I don't know, man. I'd probably be. I'd probably just be in a, a regular job like anybody else, trying to make ends meet. What did you want to be growing up? I was. I never really had a specific thing. It mm -hmm. was just more. I want to. A career something trucking was the last thing on my mind like i yeah. said trucking was the last thing on my mind bro oh. driving driving for a living was the last thing on my mind it never crossed my mind till i was 20 years and years old when i was at that job when i would yeah. see those guys like leave early and yeah. make more money than me like damn i need to get my cdl um but yeah uh yeah, any any other regular job at an agency or working for a company permanently, either driving a forklift or something like that. Uh, I know there's ways of moving up on companies like that where you start off as an agency worker and then they hire you onto the company and then you just move your way up. Um, that or, yeah, I don't know. Maybe just that. 
same old, same old. Well, trucking's working out just fine. So and, far. Yeah. So far. You got uh, any side hustles at the moment? Uh, no, nah, I don't, honestly. Just that uh, also, hobby? Also, also cans. Cans? Like soda cans. I'll yeah. go recycle them. Yeah. Yeah, some change. Yeah. It accumulates at home, you know, sodas, water bottles. Yeah. Uh, but as far as like a side hustle, side hustle, nah, not really. No? Besides recycling cans when it accumulates. So that's a part time side hustle. Doing your part to keep the world a nice, yeah. clean place. Trying to. <laughs> it's hard, but little You difference. got um, a, a word for dispatchers? Like right here, you could drop your two cents about how you feel about something or tips or, you know, you some, know what? Something they miss. I do. And this is not towards my dispatcher. Andy, because I, I, I mean, that guy's cool as hell, but uh, daytime, I got dispatchers, man, that they, there's a, there's a dispatcher, and he's got, like, all these other CSR people working, where it'll make it easier for him to either move appointments or find empties at another yard to get another load, or, hey, the driver wants another load, book another appointment real quick, but if they don't, if they've met what they had scheduled for that day, that's it. They'll send us early. They'll call it a day early. And it's like, bro, if you have drivers that want to work more and get you more work out, make you look good to the boss, like, hey, you're being more productive, do it. Um, other than that, I can't really speak on dispatchers because I've never been a dispatcher. Mm. It comes back to the whole port thing, which yeah. like we can only speak on what we see on our end. But who's to say that the dispatcher gets told by the upper heads like, hey, only do a certain amount of loads. Only yeah. do this for the day shift. Yeah. You know? Good so, good catch. So can't really speak much on that. What about your two cents for employers? Be clarification at the beginning for every employee that comes on. Like, hey, this is how our company works. Everything in detail. You want to sign up? Do it. Don't leave certain things out, and then boom. Oh yeah, that that happens a lot, bro. It's like they leave they leave that <laughs> the cert, they they leave the specific things that'll make you second guess it. Yeah, just to rule you in. And once yeah. you're in, it's like, mm. hey man, we need drivers, bro. Yeah. I mean, well they yeah. yeah what has true. been one of those uh, bait and switch for you? Uh. Back in my ready mix job, we had there was a, a big project across the street, and they never clarified that they were gonna not pay us by the load. So the first week we did that, I was like, "Oh, going to cross the street, and I'm done in five ten minutes. I'm getting this load. Psh, give me all the loads you want." Mm. But then when it came to pay time, the paycheck was low. I'm like, "Hey, bro, what's going on? Oh, we're paying you guys hourly for this because it's across the street." I'm like, well, you should have told me that before I busted my ass this week going over there. Yeah. I would have said, nah, bro, I don't want to do those loads. Send me loads far. Send me to Santa Monica. Send yeah. me to downtown. Give me the real loads. I don't want to do this. But <laughs> You're like, damn, you played yourself. Yeah, like, that's almost. when you sit back like, damn, you know, but um, yeah, that would be. Dude, this employee is the MVP of the week. Nah, Thank you. Here's your hourly really pay. Here's your hourly pay. What? Paycheck is like forty percent less. Like what? But what about any advice for anyone that wants to do trucking, especially don't. in the ports? Oh, my biggest thing is don't do it just for the money. Mm. Don't do it just for the money. Don't say I'm gonna get my CDL just to make more money. No, see it as a hey, I have a chance of uh, opportunity to make more money and make a career out of it. Boom. Because I know a couple of guys that. Are drivers that they, they don't care or value or take pride in their in their driving or in their career. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, bro, not anybody can get a CDL. Not anybody can get a Twix card. So if you got those two essential things, take pride in it. Hey, Twix card. <laughs> oh, Twix. That's the new Twix. slang. Twix. Twix. Because um, I had one of uh, my uncle's buddies tell me like, oh, Oh, you make big money now. You lame ass truck driver, blah, blah, blah. I took that to heart. I went off on him. You know, we went back and forth, a little good back and forth. Uh, but, I mean, some people might say, oh, it's not the big deal. But it's like, it for some people it is. You know, some people have to uh, go through all these other shitty jobs to find this. Some people got to quit their job and 
bust their ass for school and have no choice but to get the CDL or they don't have a program to pay for it and they have to pay out of their own pocket. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's just different spokes for different folks. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, my main thing would be don't do it for the money. Uh, do it with an open mind and then whatever comes at the beginning, uh, don't take it to heart. Uh, like I did where any little situation, I'd be blaming the workers like hey, you fucking lazy workers blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but then you know fast forward like i said the luca episode where yeah. it's like hey the management assigns us or blah, blah blah like i didn't know that before that episode so i'm sure a lot of other people that didn't see that episode didn't know what goes into factor of how that works yeah. so uh, yeah before i was one of those like fuck you you're lazy you're fucking union workers and blah, blah 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 but after that episode it's like okay hold on maybe it's just not them it is man i probably annoyed you huh when i would slide in the dm hey bro this and this like, no well see <laughs> you even told me like hey bro i don't mean to be annoying i'm like nah bro i'm, I'm not that person to yeah. take it you know to heart it's like i'm with open mind especially if it's uh on a subject that i'm new to like the whole ports mm-hmm. like i told you like hey bro nah i appreciate it i mean let me listen to it you know and then a couple of those that you sent to me, I sent out to, uh, uh, este, what do you call them? Port runners. Mm-hmm. And he didn't see him. He didn't mm. know about him. Mm. I'm like, hey, but look, este, container sent me this, check it out. So it's kind of like, like that, where it's like, like I say again, it's not just the Instagram pages, it's a platform where it's like you might give me information or somebody else information and they'll share with somebody else and, oh, hey, bro, I didn't know. Boom, now I have this knowledge. Yeah. Now we're both on the same page. So it's like those platforms is like spreading those eye-opening things where it's like we can probably i don't want to say come to an agreement but see it in a perspective where it's like both sides like hey it's not just this going on it's bigger behind the scenes going on yeah and get equipped with that knowledge and then it's better than in general being like with the arms up yeah and always complaining like now we can get that info to but yet those what lazy. What are we gonna do with it? But those lazy union workers, yeah, fuck them. <laughs> those guys that be on the, the phones, yeah, the lazy ones, the lazy ones. It's just like us, like the yeah. lazy truck drivers that are get paid by hourly and they don't care that they're holding up the line. Like, yeah, they're making us look bad because look, look what they're doing. They're causing traffic. Yeah. Uh, except for the ones that are getting paid by the load, which is I'm not saying it's anything bad. We're getting paid by the load or by the hour or throwing shit at anybody, but it's just like there's there there's definitely a, a leverage. Hey, by the hour you have no rush. You're yeah. looking at the clock. Yeah. By the load, we're, hey, we got to get on it. We got to get the shit out. Yeah. So it just, I don't know. It's, it just depends what side of the ball the toca, what side of the field. You get the hourly wage or you get the per load. What about a word for any um, union member or longshoreman that's listening to you as a driver that goes in the ports? Uh, To me as a driver that goes in the ports. Um, Something you want to tell, address? Uh, when you guys are driving around the damn terminals, bro, and you guys see us, don't run your fucking stop signs. There's been a couple times where I almost hit a clerk, and they're, like, driving fast. I'm like, okay, so you want us to obey the speed limit and obey the rules, but you guys are violating them. How the fuck does that work? Like, that's where I'm confused. Like, here I am with my hazards, you know, driving slow, and here comes this fucking clerk. <clears throat> so if I hit you, what happens? That's my ass. Possibly. I'm sure. I'm more likely. And if you send me because it's in your if, property, and if you send me a picture, you might get your whole company back. Yeah, or if you take a picture before I take a picture, or if I don't have a dash cam, it's your word against my word, and it's in it's in your area, so I'm most likely gonna be the one to get the bad end of the stick on that. So yeah, uh, yeah, that. So that practice one. what you preach, pretty much. Big. That's a big thing, and that's yeah. not including the ports. That's for everybody, bro. A lot of people do not practice what they preach they want to give out advice or tell people things and the same thing that comes out of their mouth they don't preach it and it's just like (laughs) bro like come on like Mm -hmm. you you really want to talk all this talk and you don't want to preach what you talk so i mean that's my biggest thing yeah i guess that would be the biggest word for the union guys or everybody even the truck drivers because like some of us that be throwing those piss bottles at the second pedestals it's like come on (laughs) like i'll be getting out and it's like it it smells right here like what's going on what are you guys doing you know that's the rebranded, the venti waiting time juice. Yeah, it keeps the the yellow yellow pedestals yellow. Yeah, um, yeah, that would be the best thing for the union guys. Or everybody just practice yeah. what you preach. You want us to obey the rules in there? Help us and show lead by example. You know, lead by example. Don't speed if you don't want us to speed. You know, be cautious. But then again, the security guards, man, they they. 
Those guys mess everything up. Something for them. What you want to tell the security guys? Don't scream at me, bro. <laughs> man, y'all, y'all got to get your stuff together, man. Some of you guys, some of them are cool. Though, I'm not going to lie. Some of them are cool and are actually there to help you. But some of them just don't know what they're doing, bro. And they they take their job too serious. Like, you can't even ask them or be like, hey, bro, I'm not going to that zone. I'm going somewhere else. No, 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 no. Get in line, get in line, get in line. Before you can even get a word out. Yeah. If they become a, a, a port trucker, they, they're going to find out someday. Um, like Luca was saying when he yeah. came to the to the oh yeah yeah to the yeah. to the truck driver side a little you know? bit of both worlds well so that's that was a good experience I thought about working in the ports but nah I don't want to do that it's a long wait it is you heard his story I was and speaking to one of the ladies recently I told her, hey how do you people get in here it's like oh it's a draft thing it's a draft class or whatever I'm like and in my mind I'm sitting well then how come you guys don't draft more people to help push more stuff out instead of this traffic jams mm-hmm. um and i guess it just depends on the skills there's not a lot of people that can operate the cranes recently i saw i but think they it don't was want to pay for training though yeah so how does that work yeah recently, there's enough that are qualified they're just not calling them in calling as them much in. yeah yeah uh, it was a recent story i think it was at tti it was a crane that knocked down containers from the top and it landed on the truck luckily it landed on the chassis I think that's what it was, TTI. But it's like like that, like per se. A lot of us were staying in the zone, waiting for our load, chilling in our sleeper, sleeping, taking in a nap. Imagine that container would have fell in the cab. That's that's some crazy shit. So you think about it, do you now me seeing that it's like, damn, do I really want to sit there under the crane waiting for my spot? And then some other food cut me, you know? Because we can't mm-hmm. even get out the trucks. Mm-hmm. So where is that assurance of security for us? Like, hey, we can't get out the truck, but what if that container gets knocked down and boom? That reminds me. That's what I want to say. When the the dock signal is there and, and the trans operator is up there, he just flipped someone, right? Mm-hmm. That truck leaves. The The truck behind that truck, well, you, you pull up, mm-hmm. but your spot is not... In the same one, but your truck, your, your you know, your tractor yeah. ends <clears> up <throat> right underneath the machine, right? Yeah. I would like to suggest to have better communication with your talk signal. Like, hey, let the guy know I'm going to push some cans back so that he doesn't pull up. Yeah. Because I've done that where I pull up and I'm, my tractor is right below the machine, mm-hmm. not the chassis. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even right. then, that thing can just fall and boom. And they start moving cans around, you know, while I'm there. And then at that point, I can't back up anymore because everyone else like, pulled up. And I find that very, like, disrespectful, you know, to That's what I'm saying. It's like, life. it doesn't make sense. If there's a zone full and you got people waiting for the loads and you want to stack containers, why? Mm-hmm. I understand digging out the container for the, for the for like, hey, my container's at the bottom. Yeah, yeah I understand that. But that's not even but, my spot anymore. I just pulled yeah. up. And they can see it on the RFID. Well, so they say sometimes, mm-hmm. but I think that's cap. I think they do see it. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Maybe if there's more than one company truck, maybe mm-hmm. that's where the confusion is. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> but if it's just one truck individually with that RFID tag and there's no other truck plate or company assigned to it, mm-hmm. you should be good. But I don't know. I think they should be able to see it if you're in your spot. Yeah. Because there have been times where I pull up and I'm not at the right number i'll miss it by a couple or whatever and they're like hey back up you're at the wrong spot or the dock signal will come before the crane is even coming like hey you're in your wrong spot yeah but then there's times where they won't do that and they'll be like hey your container's not here and boom and they want to take it to trouble window even though you're telling them like hey maybe i'm in the wrong spot they gave me the wrong spot can you check again i guess happened to me get out yeah, yeah. no they won't do that they'll be like i need to get out go to trouble window i can't fix that for you yeah but yeah, man, communication. Like, let let them know that you're gonna push back, so the driver doesn't isn't at risk, you know. No. But, and then that what you mentioned, it's happened to me where it'll be on the road on the road to the left, for example, you know. Yeah. So it could be D three hundred. It'll be in um uh E three hundred. They just go to the next row. Yeah. But I don't recommend, the, and this is not advice to get out of your truck and go look. So. Nah, don't. Even though some of us do it just for the assurance because, you know, mm-hmm. it just, it's, it's, I mean, I, I do it. I'm not going to lie. I do it. I go just to make sure my can's there and make sure the 
the the the facing the right way yeah uh but with all this i mean unfortunate accidents that happen like <clears throat> getting run over sadly unfortunately but it's like we have to be like we're in the we're inside your truck like you're not out and about like you guys have to like watch out but yet again how fast is the truck going that's not being react. able to stop yeah you know yeah. which comes back to again like but what makes him be in the rush the load i mean i don't know that's 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 a good thing what makes him be in the rush getting another load but like even me i'm one to load it empty or bobtail i'm not i'm not speeding because i know what can happen yeah but what's causing them to rush they've been there all day waiting on the on the load that was messed up and or now they, they want to go get another one yeah, or environment before the like daytime a, yeah i mean that's like i say is 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 like I, like I said for the new guys that want to come in don't don't do it for the money because it's, it's going to be times where you don't make a lot of money at the beginning of the week and you turn out good or you start off bad and end up good the last two days or you monday tuesday wednesday oh hell yeah three loads four loads whatever and then it just dies out that at the end of the week yeah um can i ask you something I've been asking you a lot of things. <laughs> nah, go ahead. But <clears throat> what what does the name uh, Containeros mean to you? What do you take from it? Like, what what is your definition? My definition of Containeros is, <clears throat> I want to say it's like a, I want to say it's like a, like a union, mm -hmm. but it's more like a, I don't even want to say community because it's, we're not a community. It's, it's more like a, like a group, like a, like a, I don't want to say it, but like clica type thing where it's like it, it's it's a group but it's a movement it's a mm -hmm. movement it's an empower it's an it's like a like a power movement of like hey uh before covid we weren't really uh looked at yeah out there mm -hmm. or looked at all oh, truck drivers are essential or we we help the country a lot we were just always oh, just a driver yeah but I think uh covid really helped the whole being a container Taking for those that know for yeah. those that know yeah you know because there's a lot of people that don't know what it is they think it's just some instagram thing or some sticker but nah bro. Yeah. Like, like i said it's it's a it's a brand it's it's containeros chuchos train to go port runners la lbc port drivers like all that it's people people who don't really know see it as instagram pages uh but i see it as like a resource for updates on the ports situations yeah. help uh a, a, a brand for stuff like for this podcast people that come in and share, share their stories like it's a voice for the voices as we say as it sounds yeah. where it's like experiences get put up there and hopefully it gets word to the management which it probably won't ever but who knows maybe maybe one day we'll struck a meeting at a at a city hall <laughs> will you guys show up though uh i will because uh talking and all that and not doing actions i mean what's the point of us talking if we're not going to show up when it matters yeah but yeah i yeah, feel like Conteneros is more than just a logo mm -hmm. a sticker a decal same thing with poor runners same thing with chuchos trying to go same thing with all the other guys mm -hmm. cali troqueros like all that it's wap city wap city it's wap city wap city uh, lamar <laughs> tuck <laughs> uh yeah man like even those guys wap city i mean it's people see it as stickers on the porch but it's like when i needed help i ask him i've reached out to lamar yeah. Austin, hey bro i'm at this port or i'm in this situation you think i'll be able like or even port runners oh I'll, 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 i'll i go i talk to him a lot too uh just on stuff i have like hey bro need help with this or what's going on blah, blah, blah. like it's it's cool i'm just happy to see that a lot of people taking pride in being a container holder you know It, it uh, wasn't really like popular back then. Well, it's just like me you know I mean? growing up. You don't hear that. <clears> or <throat> well, as long as for me over there in, in the valley, mm -hmm. you don't hear that. Hey, I'm a container hauler. Mm -hmm. you, you don't. You don't hear that. And especially with like, I'm a container hauler. Like, you know, like, uh, yeah, like you know? Yeah. hey, what like, do you do for a living? Oh, yeah. I'm a container hauler. Yeah. Like my sister-in-law yesterday, she's like, oh, what is the podcast about? I'm like, oh, containeros. What is that? Like, oh. <laughs> She said it. We're like container rows. What is that? Like, container man, Ross. Container, that's exactly what she said. <laughs> that's exactly what she said, bro. Container Ross. I'm like, no, that's not what container it is. Container Ross. Um, but yeah, c it's container Ross. Yeah, I told her. I said I'm gonna put you on blast on the podcast for saying it like that. 
Um, yeah, that's not how you say it, but I like it. Sounds pretty cool. Container os. It sounds cool for someone who's <clears throat> not a, in the ports or yeah. not familiar with it. Yeah. So it's it's understandable. Well, thanks for sharing your what it means to you. No. Anything you want to add? I don't know. I mean, not really, man. I mean, any other questions you have? <clears throat> I mean, outside of that, I mean, get props to you of how you turned all this around with selling your truck. <laughs> yeah. You know, doing all that. My and baby. Selling the, the, the trademark truck. Um, but, I mean, like I said, I mean, I've reached out to you and told you, like, hey, bro, just keep going. Whatever it is, whatever life's going to throw at you, just do it. Yeah. And fucking look at this swinging man. Fuck it, swinging and look, look at this now. Episode what, thirty five and going? Thirty five. Thirty five and going, and it's like now it's more of a podcast thing. Let less us, let the us are going down. Uh, I think so. Uh, yeah, <laughs> takes time, you know. Yeah, thirty five episodes in. Yeah, I think uh, by the time fifty, it'll be pinpoint. I, I hope so. But yeah, no, it, it you know it helps. Um, you guys are helping. Everything takes. You gotta move on it. You gotta take action. Yeah. I would never be comfortable with like a camera right there. I'm not a good. You know I what mean, I mean? I'm not a good speaker like this. I know I'm be, it's gonna be on YouTube, but it's like yeah. Even in school, when I'd get up to do projects, I would like stutter. Yeah. And speak fast. Yeah. Sort of nervousness. So it's like. Yeah. I mean, it's like I say, it's whatever life throws at you. Just boom, grab it by the horns and let's go. Little by the horns. At the at the beginning, it was like we, we would talk, and I was so focused on asking the next question that you I, can see the changes that from I the first hear. episode <laughs> down. Yeah, like you know, I I I I've, 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 I tune in, bro. I tune yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I won't watch every episode, but <laughs> I was like, every now and then, an episode yeah. will catch my eye, whether it's the description, the title, or like, yeah. oh, this looks interesting. So, mm. um, yeah, I could tell there's there's, yeah. there's a it's it's getting there. It's, yeah, it's getting there. God. You know, it's getting there. But it's just, like I said, it's something that takes time. Yeah. But see, like today, that's the first time I added that that Continero's question. So I think that's gonna be a good one towards the, the end. Oh, the yeah, what the, is Continero? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we all get a, a better understanding of these movements, you know, and other people don't give them a, a definition for us. But yeah, because yeah. at first I, I didn't, I didn't know, bro. I didn't know what port runners was. I didn't know what containers was. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what chuchos was. You know, I, I had no idea um, until I came across Instagram. I was like, oh, okay, cool, and followed it, but never really understood what it was. Like I would see the stories you guys would repost and like situations at the ports. I'm like, okay, what's what's going on? Like I was just confused. Mm -hmm. But then as you start seeing and kind of like at basically analyzing like oh shit this is it's like the situation going at the ports like hey watch out there's chp right here or hey watch out this this port is backed up or this is the only shit to toca up you know be prepared so it's yeah. fucked up or the automation's fucked up at Maersk or whatever trash pack yeah. is trashy again bring a lunch bring a lunch because uh, i've been caught slacking a couple times where it's like damn i'm, I'm there right before they go on lunch and yeah. all i have is a little water bottle and I'm still waiting in line, and there's no snacks. Yeah, there's nothing. You're, you're 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 scanning the whole truck for that. Have you ever forgot about a snack you had? And you you're think like, to yourself like, "Hey, bro, maybe I left something here. Yeah. Let me take this truck again." I love it when that would happen. Though, oh, Snickers, fuck yeah, I forgot I had. Oh, melted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've had those. Too. Yeah, I've had my fair share. So mandatory before I start in the mornings or like today, <clears throat> I'll go stock up, and then no, 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 no. no more Snickers for you, bro. Oh no no no! I'm talking about like no okay, no nah, the 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 healthy stuff. Um, I'll go stock up today so that tomorrow I just go straight to the yard, put it in my bag, my cooler, and boom. I'm gonna tell la abuela, hey, you did low. Que sneakers get chingado. For real. Nah, all that's gone, bro. Beer. Una lechuga ahí en la pinche sleeper. For real. <laughs> well, I mean, <clears throat> I was doing that at the beginning. Like, I was on it. I, yeah. I was on my pills taking those little salads from Walmart. Yeah. Walmart. But it's just like. They get boring. I'm not gonna lie. They, they do. Because I don't like all the other But it's boring being dead, I bet, too. Well, is it? Because you're not really alive there. Well, who knows? Just, you know? Maybe you're just a ghost. You know what? That's a good question. I don't know, man. That's a good it's, question, bro. You think there's an afterlife? I think so. You really think so? I just don't know if if you stay here <clears> or not. <throat> or if there even is a hell. What if, like, this is hell? And then... What if life is the whole hell? Yeah. And then when you die, it's when your life really starts. Who knows? That's crazy. Yeah. Like, all this is all the up and downs you're going through, and then, boom, the afterlife is just... Whew. Freedom. I don't know. I've thought about that a couple yeah. times. Like, is yeah. it really afterlife? Yeah. Like, I've heard people say that you come... The afterlife is like, you come back to, is it like a like a insect, a bird? 
or something. Damn, all those roaches growing yeah. up again. Uh, get me. Imagine huh? roaches and all that you would kill. Like, that was damn. the roach sicario. That's crazy. Yeah. I thought about that too when I was a kid and I would kill him. <clears throat> like, damn, what if I become a roach when I die? Yeah. And I get this. <laughs> that would be crazy. Shit. Well, yeah, I did have an experience. Uh, I'm going to probably share it. Um, not yet, though. I'm still analyzing it. But long story short, I, I did the um, the Bufo, the Bufo Alvarius, mm-hmm. the DMT. So I had that, what what Mike Tyson describes oh. and, and the Joe Rogan, <clears throat> the yeah. ego death. So. Yeah, those guys, that that Joe Rogan, poor guy, bro, it's getting, it's getting shut down for some stuff. But they're saying it wasn't him, but I mean, I don't know. Nowadays, yeah, they're saying it's a bunch of random clips put into one. But I mean, even if it's random clips, you gotta watch what you say. Yeah, you just can't 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 say that. Cada cabeza es un mundo, you yeah. know. So it's hard to please everyone. It is, even if you're doing right, even if you're just saying something that experienced you, and you're not saying anything bad or negative, somebody's gonna be there to say negative. Yeah. And I, I read this a couple of years ago. Like you can, you can do all the good you want. You're never gonna please everyone. It's either you're at peace with yourself. I think Nipsey said this. Nipsey also said this. He said you're either at peace with yourself and at war with the world. Or at war with the world and at peace with yourself. Something like that. Yeah, that sounds good. You know? It's like, yeah, think about it. Like, yeah, you'd rather be living miserable and worrying about what other people are saying. Or you'd rather mm-hmm. not give a fuck and do you and just know that you're doing good. And Yeah. That's that's where I'm my at. haters. Uh, haters are everywhere, bro. It's crazy. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. You got to watch out for them. Especially in those ports inside the ports. There's yeah. a lot of haters in there. And snitches, man. I feel, I feel when they see that container sticker on the trucks. You I cut, feel like, you cut, bro. Oh, nah, they did that to me once. You feel discriminated with the sticker or what? I feel like they, they, they. Uh, I don't know. Fifty fifty. I think like there's some type of way they you get treated, or if they see it in your truck, mm-hmm. they feel some type of way, and they either they'll remember your truck or something. I don't know, but I feel I, I do feel like when they see that, it's like oh, they see. I know the dog signals and the yard clerks don't give a damn. I think it's the more the top handlers. Yeah. That, that, yeah. You know, see it. But Someone told like, me they got skipped because they had it. No way. Yeah. I'm like, what but how do they know it was because they had it? Ah. Because he told think? them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he told them? Yeah. Oh, I would have let loose. I told them, really? You're going to skip me? I'm not moving, bro. Say that again when your supervisor comes. For a sticker that's on my truck? Oh, yeah, because I know what it means. What does it mean? Tell me. Well, they thought it was anti-union, but it was just voicing the concerns, you know, and they thought it was anti-union, <laughs> so it's like... Look at the logo. How is that anti-union, bro? It's a container on a truck. Yeah. How is that anti-union? <laughs> I don't get it. That's just me. Even the port runners, how is that anti-union? Or the Chucho's train to go, the Chucho sticker, Chucho's truck. Like, it's just a, it's just a brand. What are they so pressed about that they don't have stickers for their thing? Well, no, I that think be it? it just rubs off wrong when they get uh, pushed back or with the drivers complain and expose certain things. I think that's the issue, you know. But there's, but I mean, is it really called exposing when it's really what's going on? Or as far as to what, we, like, it goes back to what I tell you, where mm-hmm. it's like. As a truck driver, you can only see what's out there. Like, oh, why is this top handler leaving if there's trucks here? Why is why yeah. is there no top handler here? But you can go up to maybe the management telling, hey, come over here or go over there. Mm-hmm. Like, again, that look up is saying where it's like the yeah. management. So I feel like that's a really good eye opener for like me, myself, that when any little issue would happen at the port, I'm maybe like, fucking lazy ass, even workers and blah, blah, blah. I'm sure you remember some of my posts where you'd tell me, oh, el, 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 what, did you, what did you say? You said, el, el corajudo. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh, bro, it's because these guys are messing up our lows. But that's before that episode even came out where it's yeah. like, hey, this is this is what goes on and blah, 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 blah. So. Ideally, I would like us to all get along, but. I'm sure we can, but there, there's, it's just. Some of us take pride in what is said, so it's like it, it's understandable. We're men, yeah. you know. We take pride in our job, so just like me, I take pride in being in the ports or being a truck driver. Yeah, there's people in the in the ports yeah. that take pride in being a yard clerk, yeah. or a dock signal, crane operator, yeah, whatever. And also the way I see it now, <clears throat> like 
you know, as time goes on, you learn, you you, you pivot, you uh, do some tweaks here and there, you know, like mm -hmm. adjustments. And I see it like let's focus on our flaws and make our coexistence effective before we point the finger. No. If we're over here, like, not getting along ourselves, but we want others to get along with us, it doesn't make any sense, you know? Yeah, that's true. Or let's get our uh, operations in order. Let's or let's set up a, a, a yeah. boxing event. <laughs> with hey, all shout the out to uh, <laughs> Backyard Squabbles. <laughs> let's do that. Let's set up a boxing event. Everybody go at it. Have fun. Or paintball event. Bring all the union workers and all the truck drivers, and it's all... Nah, fuck boom, that. Boom, 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 boom. I'm a lover, not a fighter. I'm, but, I just react. I don't go out looking for nothing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's not bad to me. Like, inside the ports, it's not a bad experience. It's just when the port management kicks in, it's like, mm -hmm. fuck, bro, really? Fucking me over right now. Um, but, I mean, as far as the clerks I've been bumped into or the dog signals, I mean, some of them are cool. Some of them are just, they hate their job, but it's like, I mean, you can't be mad at me. I don't have you working here. Yeah. You don't like your job? Go find something else. That's what I did. That's what everybody does that I know. Common sense. If you're not happy at your job, find something else because yeah. i know there's plenty of uh people in the ports that are happy and they're like oh how's it going driving they're talking to you yeah and there's some that just sit there with the you know the bitch face and hey, pull up mm, coming down and they won't even read you your four last four and if you ask them hey what are the last four just to confirm and they get upset mm -hmm. like you don't want me out of the you want me to get out the truck i just want to make sure i have the right can instead of me wasting time going all the way to the mechanics and like, hey it's the wrong can you know so or when they or when you're in the spot and you're already lined up but they have you move up three because times because they want to have the top panel on the right side mm. move their empties for the ship or whatever oh, man i cut i went back and forth with the lady at apl for that yeah i was like bro really you want me to move for how long oh i don't know the crane's coming i'm like well my load is right there why do you why do i need to move you guys should wait till i get my load and then i get out of there security that's exactly what she did. She was like, we just need you to move, you know, for while well, the crane gets here. Because the crane was on the zone down, but there's like two trucks there. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I'll wait. And then as soon as the trucks got loaded, I backed up to my spot. And the top handler guy was honking. I was like, I'm not moving, bro. Here comes the yard the yard lady. Hey, you know, we need you to move. I'm like, nope. See that crane? Yep. Okay, it's coming to get my load. So you can have him load me and I'll move out of here. That way they can be doing this while you guys work the line that's back there that's not in the way mm. and oh, that's what happens i did get my load eventually so with, to, to management find a way for traffic to flow just use common sense bro yeah. i mean I, I, I that's how i see it it's not hard if a zone is full and you want to move well yet again but maybe that's the only ship the ship i mean i don't know how that works yeah who mm -hmm. knows how that works but it's I, like i want to learn more too you know like yeah. if you if you guys are working in a certain spot don't send us to burn the empty there from the pedestal <laughs> yeah. like fuck you know we're at the pedestal yeah. you guys have time to see where you guys are moving empties or whatever don't send us over there and then now you have us trying to get into our zone and you have your your yard guys all in the way fucking everything up yeah that, that's where i'm like really you guys yeah. gonna just send us to another zone well thank you thank you for sharing thank you for coming no no problem thank you for having me where can they get, get a hold of you uh, on instagram at uh 707 zeus with a z uh, with a z uh that's it i mean my instagram is private so i mean if i see that you got something in your bio of like the ports which is what i do because i have a lot of people there's random requests and i kind of yeah. like fish point like hmm you okay cool boom uh but yeah i mean feel free any questions any opinions on what i say if you feel some type of way dm me uh, yeah i mean i'm not afraid to go back and forth on an opinion basis yeah. just as long as you don't cross the line i mean what is anything outside Can of the port this car out of the picture yeah, man. Keep, well i don't have a car anymore <laughs> but just just you know yeah i don't have a All car right, anymore man. but okay. eventually cool well, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for coming. And we'll catch you on the next one. On the next one, guys. Peace. Stay tuned.